Is because around Santa. Santa? Is there, is there. Oh, I'm here. He's been okay, there. Yeah, yeah, I think it should be okay now. Where is Babina? Is she is it okay to start? Yes. Yeah, you can start. I think. Uh, I think we should get started. Okay. Yes. Then let people join in. And uh, uh, whether uh, Chantal, before we start the check in with Vikas, whether the live streaming is happening on that uh, YouTube channel and uh, that Facebook. I can't hear you. Hello? Yeah, it's uh, Rupa is here? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, yes. Yeah, now that we can start. I hope that you have you have gone through that note that Shanta has seen it. I just went briefly. Uh, uh, I was... these notes. Uh, Rupa, you come in on time. I know it. <laughs> no, nice to see you. Not ready. Time. Come on. Yeah. No, uh, see, my uh, <laughs> my tie lines are all going here. Where? <laughs> ah, I know that. And, I'm in my underwear. I'm in my underwear. Don't be public. Come on. Hi, Banu. Hi, hi. Good to hear you. By the way, we have this program live stream on Kusim YouTube TV and as well as Facebook page. So, okay. What should be? Be a little careful. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so it's nice to catch up with all, all friends. Anyway, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty of this program. Yeah. yeah. Up. Okay, so formally, good afternoon, everybody. Um, on behalf of People's Campaign for Resurgent Manipur, I want to extend my warm welcome to all the distinguished speakers of today's panel discussion. Um, and also to all the participants and all those who are watching us online, um, live on Facebook, and also on Kutsem uh, YouTube channel. To start the program, I would like to request Shanta Laishram to give and share a brief um, introductory note um, on People's Campaign for Resurgent Manipur. You're not audible, uh, Dashanta. You're not audible. Uh, yeah, not audible at all. Uh, you're not audible. No, <laughs> we can't still hear you. Uh, I can't hear anything. Where is Shanta? Is he around? Yes. Um, Where is Shanta? I think Shanta is speaking, but we're not. Um, he's not audible. Her voice is not reaching Delhi, as usual. The usual problem. <laughs> not yet, really. Is she wrong? Ah. <laughs> The, the Chota Dilli is Shillong, used to be at least. Good old days. Uh, uh, Shanta, you have to unmute yourself or do something. Yes. Or maybe you should just put your headphones on. Yes. Use your headphones. Okay, he's joined again. If, you, if you're using your headphones and they're not working, just use the computer. You're, you're muted. How can you be heard? Yeah, she's muted. He's muted. <clears throat> he's muted. Yeah, somehow I'm not as good to Now you were audible, but then it went back. So a bit too audible, actually. <laughs> not audible at all. Ah. Not at all audible. No, uh, he but again muted himself. That's something right. Something wrong ah. with his. Uh, there was a burst, you know, it was a staccato burst. 
just came in and then went out. Anyway. This is the uh, new normal where we are trying to adjust ourselves. Shanta? I don't think... Yeah, somehow I'm not... Yeah, somehow I'm not... Yeah. Okay, yes. I think, I think you to, should get started uh, here without much ado. You know, let's bang on to the discussion. That's all. Uh, <laughs> let me just show on a I think he's now. Is it? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. I think I. Have to, okay. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. You had. Uh, I think you are doing in machines on. Yeah. That's why. That's yeah. Please. Yeah. Can you can you see this screen? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. We can. Okay. So thank you. So welcome everyone. So uh, <coughs> yeah. First of all, I will thank our panelists, moderators, and everyone present for our ninth anniversary where we are having our panel discussion. So before we start the panel discussion, let me. To give you a brief history about this people's campaign for research in Manipur and its MN objective. So, people's campaign for research in Manipur was initiated on 18 October 2011. So, it was initiated by a group of citizens, mainly students, professionals, youths, uh, <coughs> Manipur or outside Manipur, but uh, one from Manipur. I mean, so this is for often for Manipur who are concerned with the prevailing state of affairs in our Manipur and we are trying to seek a change towards a new and better Manipur and we have to collectively work together to make, make some change in the society. In fact, uh, <coughs> so we are the, I mean, the people who started the campaign are only legislators and co participants for a process for research in Manipur. The campaign is fundamentally all about self-initiative and involvement of each and every citizen of Manipur to bring about a change in the affairs of our state. And so, as I told you, this is a campaign for the citizens, for the citizens and by the citizens. Now, let me tell you briefly about some aims of our uh, PCRM. So, yeah, can you, uh, can you see this screen? Yes. Yeah, so our, some of the aims of our PCRM is to fight against the private and vested interests that seek, uh, uh, seeks to undermine the basic fabric of collective life in Manipur. Basically, we want people to have a conscious decision when they, uh, yeah, or when they vote for the election. So, we want to give it, um, basically, we want to campaign so that people are aware of the issues, what they face when they elect their representative. and. We want our aim to be a change about new political culture where public policy is a public importance plays a significant role in our society and polity. And this time also aims to cultivate a culture of dialogue and debates in order to generate informed opinions and process of public issues and to make the political class, public institutions, leaders accountable to the citizens as individuals and as a collective. And also seeks to encourage and cultivate the involvement of private citizens in the affairs of the collective. And it also seeks to engage, engage and monitor the function of public offices and institutions, as well as the way in which West and public <coughs> officials and elected, elected representatives of the people respond to or address issues uh, which are of public importance. Also, our campaign seeks to fight against the private and vested and interest that seek to undermine the basic fabric of collective life in Manipur. And we seek to bring a new political culture where uh, uh, basically public morality and issues of public importance play a significant role. So this is some of our campaign objectives. And on October 18, 2011, actually, we started in, the, I mean, in many places all over the 
uh, in different cities of India in Manipur. So this is it. I'm showing you some pictures. Uh, this was one of the first gathering which was done in October 2011 where we um, was initiated. Not only in Delhi, but it was it's a picture from Delhi, but uh, it was also done in Manipur, Mandigar, uh, and cities of India. And also, uh, through our campaign, we went for this uh, public uh, rallies uh, to make people aware of the support so that people consciously vote for elections. And these are some of the pictures we all want to hear. And so, this is part of the rally. And we also distributed pamphlets to uh, different organizations, uh, like we also interacted with different civil society organizations, all people from different times. And that was in Pyramban Market Hill, where this we distributed pamphlets. And we also put this billboards in different parts of the um, city area and around, so that people are aware of. Uh, the, I mean, this campaign and also how I and mean, what they should do for the election. And so these are some of, people, yeah, some of these things which we have done. So I hope uh, today's panel will uh, bring about a new discussion. I mean, of course, the Indian advice which now I go to the current times. And I'm sure the esteemed panelists and moderator and all those present will try to uh, give a nice clear picture of this, then we will have fruitful discussions. And I would like to welcome you all of all the moderators, all these panelists, uh, participants for joining us, and welcome everyone. Thank you. Um, thank you, Shanta. So following the objective of PCRM to um, sort of cultivate a culture of dialogue um, and, in, uh, and informed debates in order to generate a public uh, informed opinions and choices on public issues, we have been organizing um, various talks and discussions on various socio-political issues um, since 2011 on October 18th every year. So for this year, uh, for the ninth anniversary of People's Campaign for Resurgent Manipur, we have a panel discussion on um, Indo-Naga peace talks and India's Northeast, identities, aspirations, and way forward. For this panel discussions, we have a panel of eminent speakers from various fields and various regions. So for today, we have Sanjoy Hazarika, who is director at Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, New Delhi. We have Pradeep Panjobam, who is the founding editor of Impal Free Press and currently the editor of FPSJ Review Impal. We have Subir Bhomik, who is the editorial director of the Eastern Link. Then we have Vikash Kumar, faculty at Azim Premji University, Bengaluru. We have with us Bono Haralu, who is a journalist and also Professor Xavier Mao, who teaches at Northeastern Hill University, Shillong. And to moderate the session, um, we have Rupa Chandra Yunam, who is the senior, uh, who is a senior journalist and also the editor in chief uh, of Impact TV, Impal. And before I uh, 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 hand over the session to Oja Rupa Chandra, I would request all the participants to kindly uh, mute uh, the the audio so that we can reduce the noise for the speaker. Um, so without further ado, I would like to hand over the session to Ajarupa Chandra. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the ninth anniversary of People's Campaign for Research in Manipur on the topic uh, Indonaga Peace Talk, Identities, Aspiration, and the Way Forward. Uh, this topic comes even as the talk between the government of India and the NSN IM is kind of hitting a rod block and it's a very crucial moment that we are discussing this point and to discuss this and go more in depth we have with us a panel of speakers uh, with very experience and huge background uh, gentlemen ladies and gentlemen I bring you First of all, Sanjay Hazarika, who is a 
eminent journalist who now works as director of Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative from New Delhi. Welcome to the panel, Sanjay Da. And we have also Pradeep Fanjobam, who is also another Senate journalist who used to edit a, a very, uh, very prominent English paper in Imphal, the Imphal Free Press. Now he is editing the FPSJ Review from Imphal, which is an online uh, outlet. Uh, welcome to the panel discussion also, Tamo Pradeep. Also joining us is Subhi Bhomik, who's, who's had a very long stint with the BBC and has worked in the uh, seven states of the entire Northeast and even across to the other side of the uh, country to Myanmar. Uh, he is the editorial director of the Stern Link. Welcome to the panel discussion as well. Uh, we are also joined by Vikas Kumar, who is a faculty at Azim Premji University, Bangalore. Welcome to the show, Chef. And also with us is Banu Haralu, a journalist who has worked with NDTV and has covered the Northeast extensively. Uh, she has also had a, a, a good inning in the journalism. She is still now working as a journalist. Uh, welcome to the show, Banu. And also uh, joining us from Shillong, Professor of Nehu, Javier P. Mao. Welcome to the show. Thank you all for joining Thank us you. this Thank afternoon. Uh, uh, let me kick off. Thanks, this. Rupa. Yeah, uh, welcome. You're welcome. Uh, it's nice catching up with all new, uh, all faces you haven't seen for a long time. But uh, ahead of us is one of the crucial topics, which I believe is in the uh, core your, of your heart. Uh, whatever you have done in your past career, I think all boils down to tackling all the issues in the Northeast. And I'm glad that uh, the People's Campaign for Research in Manipur has brought all of you together on this platform so that you can uh, let us all know what you think about the ongoing Indo Naga peace talk and the problem that it's going to go into and the problem that it might create when the government of India tries to solve this issue. Because uh, this is an issue which will have a lot of ramification. Whether it remains solved, it is solved or it remains unsolved, it continues to plague the people of the Northeast. And nothing better than this group of people to discuss what's going to come ahead of us. And you will be the best person to tell the entire Northeast what is the way forward. And I am thankful to... Uh, people's campaign uh, for research in Manipur for bringing all of you together. But let me start with Sanjoy first. Sanjoy Da, are you online? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I was muting myself. Yeah, you have, you have been walking around the Northeast for years, decades. And uh, when it comes to identities, you know better than most of us how each of these uh, seven or eight, depend on uh, how you want to define Northeast, uh, if you include Sikkim, the, how, how important are identities to all this group of people living in this space that we lovingly call Northeast India? How important is identities to them? And uh, what kind of impact these identities can have on any political issues that crop up and the solutions that we try to bring in. How important is this identities? And if you can add, how is there a way we can include all these identities in any kind of solution to any problem that we might face in the future, notwithstanding the one that we are facing now? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Rupajandra, for uh, your, your questions and the opening. Uh, uh, I understand. I was given a set of questions by the the uh, by the pan by the uh, organizers, which I which I will try to respond to and answer to your points. And I'll stay, try and stick to my ten minutes, which I've been uh, told is the time limit. But first of all, I want to thank uh, uh, the resurgent Manipur group. I'm glad I didn't say insurgent Manipur resurgent Manipur group for. Uh, their uh, invitation and it's really good to see uh, many old friends again Rupa, uh, Bimol, uh, Shanta, 
um, the committee, uh, Pradeep, of course, Professor Xavier Mao, Bano. So I want to thank all of you uh, uh, for uh, having me here. And at the outset, I just want to say one thing, which is that all of us look grayer and older and perhaps a bit balder. But uh, the one person who hasn't changed at all is Professor Xavier Mao. He looks as exactly as I remember him from about 20 or 30 years ago. So one that tells us that tells us a very interesting. Thank you thing. very much for your compliments. <laughs> that tells us a very interesting thing. It is that things may seem to change, but some things don't, or some people don't. And it is also a very telling statement about the situation that we face today that you're discussing. You're essentially talking about what he started talking about in 1947 with the Naga people. So <laughs> we have really mm -hmm. moved a few, maybe a few feet or a few meters forward, but we haven't, uh, you know, completed the race by a long shot. And I think that um, uh, engaged citizenship is really what Manipur and the other states of, of the region we call the Northeast is all about. And the fact that uh, we have been uh, asserting our citizenship, our rights, our views uh, for many decades is, is critical to this whole place. Uh, now, many years ago, and I'll tell you just an anecdote of, about Mr. Muiva and myself, because uh, as I mentioned in the book, I had been asked by Narasimha to go to Bangkok to engage with um, Mr. Muiva and uh, Mr. Su many years ago, a long time ago. And uh, after that, the talks uh, followed. Um, and I remember saying to Mr. Muiva, I said, Mr. Muiva, you are the collective leadership. You have been together for so many years. In India, the political system may remain the same, but the governments change. But their approach and their commitment remains as as it has been for for many years and uh, no matter which government really comes to power it's uh, it's not going to let go of the essential issues as far as uh, uh, as far as uh, the the core interests of india is concerned strategic and political I'm very glad also that you know our two good friends from Naga and uh, Naga friends are here uh, because it would be impossible to speak on Naga issues uh, without without them without the presence of our senior friends and I'm very glad also that Vikas is here who's just published a book on the statistics um, of in a way the politics of the region especially especially in Nagaland I think that um, this is, uh, you know, the negotiations are part of a larger project in, you know, Indian state project of nation building and, um, you know, manufacturing concept, ensuring stability and territorial integrity. And uh, it's been going on for many decades and it's not going to close with or without an agreement. And uh, as far as manufacturing concept is concerned, the Indian state has been reasonably good not very good but reasonably good at uh, at calming things down and uh, uh, perhaps at times creating a greater trigger for for problems for itself and for the for different regions but i think that is the approach we need to to recognize that it believes that somewhere or the other you can manufacture or develop consent with not with a group of of people if not the entire entire group groups and I'll come to the point that Rupa made it towards the end. Can there be a, an agreement that brings together all sides? I'll come that towards the end of my remarks. I think that uh, one thing we need to recognize is, uh, and I'm very glad that younger scholars are here today, is that um, while the insur insurgent groups may be defanged, but they are and they may be less powerful and less attractive to the younger generation, but they retain a certain uh, constituency. That's one. The second is that uh, many younger people 
see their future as aligned to India. It may not be seen as, you know, embraced by India, but certainly in an engagement. And this engagement is, I think, the key for the younger generation uh, and not the confrontation of the past. And that's where the older leaderships need to understand that where some of the contestations may remain, it is a new generation that is looking at different different issues. I would say that one of the things, and this is something I've written about in the past, so I have no hesitation in talking about it. I think that one of the things that uh, is required is the bringing together of people around the round table of all parties, whether it's the uh, insurgent groups, uh, the militant groups, the uh, armed groups, uh, or the political parties. And you need something with civil society and uh, scholars and academics like those who are here. Because often uh, we have seen in the past years, uh, there is no dialogue. There is, uh, there is just a unilateral approach to things. And you know, the one size fits all in this country certainly doesn't work. And it certainly won't work in a region as complex and, and challenging as the region we call the Northeast. Many of you will have also seen Mr. Muiva's statement. Uh, the core of that is really hinges on two points. The interview he gave to Karan Thapar a few days ago. It is that there cannot be an agreement. The Nagas will not settle for anything that does not have a separate flag or constitution. To which the problem, the problem with that is, unfortunately, and since we are talking frankly, is that the, the government has already dismantled the JNK constitution. It's already dismantled. The fact that there is a flag, there was a flag which the JNK government had. How will it turn around today and say that we will give you a flag and a constitution? Anyway, they were never interested in doing that, whether it's this government or the previous one. I think that's something that we need to understand. So <clears throat> it can't be seen as a bilateral issue or a unilateral issue. It needs to be seen in the fact that there are many players in this and land you know, for all the Northeast, whether it's the, the tribes of, of, of the Northeast, of Nagaland State, or Manipur, whether it's the communities of Assam or Tripura or whatever, land is still the ethnic marker. You know, you, uh, all, most of the contestations in the Northeast are over land. And uh, all of us know this, this is a small group, that all the uh, state assemblies have passed resolutions uh, saying that we will not part with an inch of our territory for a settlement. And the government of India can't ride roughshod over it. This is the, this is, this is the uh, shall we say, the, the fork on which it finds itself. Is that how is it come to a settlement that it brings in the other side? So I've been saying for some time, you need to dialogue with everybody and do it. You've come to a point where it needs to be open. It can't be behind closed doors and secret uh, conference rooms and venues anymore. Uh, because that has lead, led, especially after the framework agreement of 2015, has led to a lot of confusion. So uh, I think that what we need to work on is a consensus, not just an agreement among some parties, some interested groups, and the government of India. There needs to be a consensus, and that is the key. Without that, it won't work. And uh, as far as uh, rights are concerned, because this is all about people's perceptions of rights and their own self-belief in their rights. But then the question comes up, where do your rights cease, where mine begin? Or my perception of my rights begin? Is that understanding there or not? And unless we define these rights so that there, are, there is a sense of equity and equality, I think the confrontation will continue. Um, confrontations, contradictions, and, and contestations. Um, I will close in just a couple of minutes uh, with, with, with two points. One is that I believe that I'm very glad that Bano is here and uh, others are also here. You know, the forgotten factor or the missing factor in many of the peace negotiations and many of the processes is that women are not represented. You can't have a whole bunch of men sitting together and deciding for the whole community or the whole, uh, uh, whole region if women are not represented. 
I mean, you had something in Assam which was just decided, uh, a, a committee which met, which didn't have a single woman on it, but on a critical issue. I mean, this is something, and they can't be just outside the door all the time in the ante room. They need to be at the table. And that, that has not happened. The only woman who was negotiating from strength of power and strength was Indira Gandhi as prime minister with the entire uh, Naga leadership in the 60s and, and 70s. So uh, I think that's a very important factor to bring in. Um, and as far as the land issue is concerned, this is unfortunately the key on which, as I said, most governments find themselves sitting on a tinder box or on a pitchfork. You know, it's a very uncomfortable place to be. Uh, those in Assam uh, would say that we are one fifth of what we were. Well, we, that doesn't change what is. But there are, there are demands and uh, contestations and rights of the Nagas which we need to perhaps uh, consider and uh, which we need to consider and uh, engage. Uh, and the last point is, last two points and literally these are the last two sentences. The center can't be wished away. The center is there, it's going to be the key player, it's wanting to drive a solution but it cannot ride roughshod over the others. I think that is one of the keys. And, and the last thing that I would say before I, I close is that, and this is something that a former member of the Nagar, a leader of the president of the Nagar, who, who said to me when he had, they had come to Delhi to talk with different groups, he says, we have had enough ill will among the communities, among the states. What we need is to create goodwill. So whatever steps we take, whatever suggestions we make, whatever efforts we uh, think about must be in that context to build a dialogue because without dialogue, you're not going to get anything which is substantive and to create goodwill. So I'll stop there. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry I missed some portion of your speech because of connectivity issue. Uh, but I'm sure uh, as we go along, I'll catch up. I'll let you have one more go on uh, some of the issue deeper. But let me come to Dr. Vikas Kumar now. Dr. Vikas, I hope you're online. Can you hear me, Dr. Vikas? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I have a question for you here now. Uh, do the various accords in the past or the nature of the peace talk with the various armed political groups and the nationalist assertions reflect some discernible outlook of the Indian state or the government of India towards India's northeast. If yes, what is the outlook? Can we decide the same from the manner in which the present negotiation with NSN IM has been conducted? Good afternoon, everyone. Last year, I was in Imphal during this time, so it is good to be back again. Uh, it's, a, it's a great honor to be with all of you today, not only because I have the privilege of engaging with some of the best minds and hands of the region, but also because I am new to this region. So it is uh, it is therefore quite reassuring that people here are open to hearing outsiders on what is a very important but also an emotionally surcharged issue and that too on a very special occasion. So I use the word outsider in all seriousness and with a great deal of responsibility and we can come back to this during the question answer you know, session. But first, let me thank Molda for inviting me and address the points uh, he has asked me to discuss today. I must admit that this is going to be thinking aloud in the middle of a rapidly changing equations. And uh, for some of the things I'm going to say, I have only a few clues now. So I will first, you know, go back to the early post-colonial period and then you know come to the present a self-image of our founding fathers was 
that of a non hegemonic and inclusive leadership because they had waged a peaceful secular anti colonial struggle they had the self image despite their experience with the muslim league and troubles in punjab the naga hills you could stand them it was too small it was too new to modern civilization it had no history of direct antagonism with mainland india and it was economically unviable yet it bluntly questioned their self image uh you see here you do not know india has you know been be comfortable with diversity at some level however uh, it had a different notion of diversity it you know it it uh, there was a political consensus of linguistic diversity however every you know each indian linguistic state was about the size of a large western country now in the north east they were confronted by a different order of diversity and the and and you know and with the old colonial uh, colonial bureaucracy and a leadership you know tuned to much larger scale of things they could not handle the 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 you know region uh you know uh, and 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 you also need to note that that uh, some of our leadership in fact most of our leadership had accepted the colonial anthropology which placed the tribes at the lower civilizational pedestal so it is not surprising that in in the early years we heard the prime minister the governor as well as you know senior civil servants expressing surprise that how come how can the tribes with a first generation literate are writing such sophisticated submissions in english of question of nationhood and and international law so so there was this this you know and 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 and, and so therefore they found it a little uh, surprising that this is that these kind of contemporary demands are emerging out of a region which has just kept into modernity so uh, Jawaharlal Nehru the the first prime minister he oscillated between disbelief and frustration on the one hand and accommodation on the other he was he was grappling with with planning without sufficient resources international border conflicts etc and in the middle of this he was you know faced with this aga and other problems he was impatient and econ with these you know, demands however he did not mean not to accommodate he only wanted uh, uh, the india of his dreams to come to into being before anybody decided to leave so that you know that he wants first india to assume its its you know a uh, 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 proper place and and then and then you know communities can choose if they want to continue or not in 1947 Seven, he thought that it is too premature for people to, to talk about leaving the country. Uh, now, now, so, so he was, he was, you know, you know, oscillating between, uh, uh, you know, uh, frustration and anger, and on one hand, and accommodation on the other. Unfortunately, the colonial bureaucracy and the army that the country inherited was not tuned for, you know, the the accommodation. It was more comfortable. you know responding to the prime minister's frustration and anger it is not that the prime minister was not aware of these problems or with the with the administration in fact he himself on many occasions warned that please don't reduce administration to numbers games or or mechanical implementation of policies however we can still ask why did he not intervene Uh, uh i mean he intervened in 1930 in 1953 on his own he came with the burmese counterpart and he was snubbed and this snubbed appeared in new york times and uh, and this was very important because nehru cared for his image in the west so the question new york times asked why did he fail See, he was flying blind in the hills and his bureaucracy failed him and given the language you know 
gap he could not on the spur of the moment find a new connect there were you know, jp chaliya and others who tried later indira gandhi also tried but for various reasons things couldn't go forward now despite all these failed talks you see that a playbook emerged and this playbook you know involved the first thing was you strike the extremist faction hard and this striking hard was almost like uh, it was almost like uh, the colonial pacification uh, uh, your tools then the other thing was to show up benefits show our benefits on the common people and the third part was to accommodate the moderate faction in power structure and offer political concessions to help them retain some kind of legitimacy the political concessions unless they were enshrined in the constitution were open ended and granted with the belief that with the passage of time people will either forget them or they will be assimilated in the secular modern nation how our demographic engineering and interfering in faith were never part of the of the strategy cease fires and a series of cease fires and talks were were used as means of entrapping the 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 insurgents now without a clear goal of how they are going to resolve this in the end uh now uh now this is the past and we have seen 23 years of dialogue with the nsc and i am so many other dialogues with the with the alpha your factions of alpha and, and so on and so forth however if if i am not wrong a new uh, uh, uh template of playbook is slowly emerging and the recent agreement with the bodo factions gives certain clues in this regard now this shift is is you know prompted by three separate factors firstly after seven decades of counter insurgency and administration uh, the administration the state is much more informed and experienced second uh, the state the government has also uh, seems to be influenced by the large you know jumbo peace talks in myanmar in fact uh, ajit doval the national security advisor himself has sat in some of the meetings a third uh, thing which is driving this new playbook is a new party which has emerged as a durable axis of the indian politics uh, the congress used to rely upon local leaders elite in the northeast however the rss when it came to the northeast found that the field was already saturated it brought its own cadre from the mainland the first generation of the cadres struggled all their lives with proper nouns however they paved the road for this second generation now today the bjp has a well informed grassroots cadre from within the region as well as outside the region apart from him uh, 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 apart from the strategies like himanta uh, bishwas sharma Now see, this is different from from the Congress of old time, which had only which had which had largely relied on you know key figures in the region. Now uh, uh, the 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 uh, so therefore the Congress ruled for the dominant elite, whereas the RSS made inroads via the margins, including in Assam, where they had direct access to the Assamese upper caste. Now, given its trajectory. a crowded negotiation table is politically beneficial for the bhartiya janta party and this is also preferred by the government because uh, because it it strengthens the government's your democratic credentials it at least it, you know at least it presents it as as your democratic it tells the insurgent leaders that they are part of a larger crowd and it makes working out very very difficult if tomorrow the government of india does a bodo land like a deal in nagaland uh, it will be very difficult for a individual group or part you know party to that agreement to work out because they are you know intertwined in a lot of uh, web of you know cross cutting relationships so i would argue that even if the even if the government fails in this iteration in nagaland the indian state has finally learned learned to swim with the micro diversity it is no longer cribbing uh, cribbing about the economically unviable smallness 
and it is more bold and calculative it is prepared to shake up things and is confident and and for some reasons and for some reason it is confident of handling the negative fallout if any it is it is uh, uh, i would say that you know this is a new government this is a new state it is not you know concerned if the nsc and im captures dimapur it is not concerned about that it is rather happy draining the support of im in the hinterland today today the the uh, nagaland governor is acting as an insurgent how there is the im is, is more you know state like that it needs a flag or this or that it needs systems processes right so uh, just to, to conclude uh, in just two or three points so so the uh, new playbook has emerged and this is going to be this is what you're going to see in future um, uh and 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 it would be it would be i think i should add that it would be unfair to blame blame rn devi for for derailing the process the process actually began in june 2001 when imphal was 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 rocked by very heavy protests and then the next uh, you know step in this you know derailment happened when ibobi singh blocked muiva from coming to manipur it is at that time that people like rn ravi sense that the tide has turned and they have to they have to they have to have a new way of approaching approaching these these talks and they were prepared to dispense with the centrality of an indian im which they had inherited from the 1990s and the fine the next blow was from account and an outspoken individuals like kk sema which made it easier for people to speak out in nagaland and the final blow in my opinion and was the division of districts in in anipur this then it has been it has been clear that nsc and im cannot hope to to dictate the terms of the of the dialogue because it is increasingly squeezed between nagaland and the maitreya and cookies on the other hand so it seems to me that that the that the center will be prepared to take the risk of leaving out i am rather than you know conceding the centrality to 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 you know to uh, uh, interlocutor um uh, we, you know and 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 we we'll see that most of in most of the places this this bodo land and the new uh, uh, you know post 2000 and nagaland approach of including everyone and making everyone come on the table and sign is going to be seen whether that will address all the all the democracy deficit and and constitutional challenges is something that is uh, that remains to be seen uh, i would also like to say something on the grassroots but because my time is up i'll keep it for my later remarks but there has been a remarkable change in the grassroots at sanjay da you know entered uh, earlier but i'll keep that that because i'll get it So I'm done with the initial remark, Dr. Vikas. Yes. Yes. Uh, can you hear me, Dr. Vikas? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the uh, for the beautiful uh, background that you have given. Uh, but I have a one more question before you go. Uh, there's a shift, as you said. There's a shift in the approach from the central government since the Congress held uh, and the BJP style. There's a there's a mark shift. Uh, but the question now is what are the chances this is a question to you what are the chances of resolution or challenges various challenges that are you know that are based on the identities that are uh, you know uh, emerging from the notice india the the, the problem the problem will not be completely government... solved however they are hoping to quarantine it they are they are hoping to quarantine it in ukrul they believe that they can do this and this government is known for taking very uh, uh, you know impulsive you know decisions so i you know what i see is that that uh, uh, you know the nscn im will find it very difficult to hold on see all the tributaries which used to feed the nscn im are not are now to drying up See the Aga Ho Ho is no longer the organization it used to be. 
the the uh, naga mothers association is also weak all the all the and naga students federation is weak so all the tributaries which used to feed the nscn im in the early days of idealism in the late 90s it was hoped that it will it will help solve the problem all those tributaries have to died up have have to dried up and there is and there is a new generation of organization which has come uh, which has emerged after 2013 after 2013 election this was the time when people of agaland when i saw them talking in a new way and there was a turn so uh, the government will not be able to solve it completely because there is a very strong sentiment of naga nationalism and it will not get resolved however i see that the new generation this new generation which i which i see is not is you know is meeting the is meet is meeting its the, the mainland in different areas it is no longer meeting the mainland in the old arenas where my generation met they are meeting them in sports ground they are meeting them in hornbill festivals they are meeting them in fashion shows car rallies this new generation is not is not prepared to endlessly wait for the most perfect solution they want an a closure at this moment and they have their own plans you cannot barricade them behind inner lines and and village gates i'm not saying that they abandon their their nationalistic uh, you know uh, uh, feeling it's only that they are carrying their agarness to wherever they work wherever they go and they are prepared to fight it out in the crowded metropolitan cities of india so so they do i mean unlike mr muiva they are prepared for a closure at this moment so that they can move along however this does not mean that the core issue of naga nationalism has been addressed it has only been quarantined and postponed to a different time okay dr vikas uh, i missed most of your answer but i hope other uh, panelists uh, might have been able to catch because the audio on my side is not so uh, uh, good uh, may i come to subir da subir bhomik Can you hear me, Subhita? Yes, I can hear you, and I have heard everything that Vikas and Sanjay da has said. I'll make five points. Yeah, because I I don't believe in going here and there. You know, I'll, I'll come straight to the point. Number one, you have an interlocutor in Nagaland today who says this issue is not political. What is it? Is this not a new thing? Everybody who has negotiated with the Nagas in the 1960s, 70s, later on. I've been involved in two or three phases. Like Sanjay, I was sent by Narsi Varo. I was not sent by anybody, but I was asked by Arun Prasad Mukherjee, who was officer on special duty, former CBI boss, to Indrajit Gupta, uh, you know, the first communist home minister of this country, to link them up with the Naga. So I have my share of you know backroom dialogues, which I've been involved in. The thing is, nobody ever said that the Naga issue is not political. Why would then the state of India get involved? Just send the army in and hammer these guys. Here is an interlocutor who has the temerity to say, and let me say this loudly so that he can hear it in his bloody Raj Bhavan, that this issue is not political. Come on, what are you talking about? So send in the Assam Rifles, like B. N. Malik recommended in 1950. Send in the Assam Rifles, hammer the Nagas, probably sort it out. We are therefore in a very dangerous situation at the moment. That we have a similar resurgence. We are talking of resurgence, Manipur. You have a resurgence of stupidity in Delhi, and their satraps and lieutenants in in northeast who are saying Nanga issue is not political. What is it then? Is it something uh, of a mattress on which you are supposed to sit, or a car which you are supposed to drive? What the hell is Nanga issue? First, let these guys define. As Sanjay has rightly said, center is a factor. And the center is a factor sometimes for the right reasons and sometimes for the wrong reasons. And here, the center is getting its act wrong. They are getting it wrong because they are allowing an interlocutor, a police officer. He only understands law and order. Okay. The trouble is, you know, the border issue. Vikas was talking about. The, there was a very nice new thing in the border issue, and Mr. Mathur, who sorted this problem out, will own up. Because of his close interaction with me, 
because we have been sev several times you have said that try to get all factions on the table. If you have a dialogue with everybody on the table and if you have an agreement signed by everybody, then you don't have trouble in future. Don't do another Sri Lanka court, right? And now here is this man who is saying, if necessary, I'll keep the IM out and I'll bring the other Naga groups and I'll have a settlement. You want to deal with Trinamool Congress and you'll say, I'll leave Mamta Banerjee out and I'll deal with Partha Chatterjee and some two-bit politician in some you know, small-time Calcutta locality. What the hell are these people talking about? I'm very angry because I see this whole thing falling apart because of what these people are saying and what they are saying reflects what they have in mind. This is number one. So first, agree that the Naga issue is political. Send a chap here to negotiate who is political, not one of these police guys, okay? Keep them out of the picture. We don't have a partisan. We don't have a partisanity today, and this is very serious. Subhida. Yeah. What do you? Subhida. Yeah. Subhida, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Uh, can Can I add in a question for you? No, no, don't bring in a question. Let me make my five points first. Yeah. <laughs> don't interrupt <laughs> in between, because uh. yeah. Please listen. This is number one. Uh. First, admit Naga issue is political. Secondly, make it transparent. Sanjata was very right when he said, you know, these dialogues are held back room. Why has Mr. Muiva also accepted this situation? Why is he not transparent? He is coming out with a leak here or a leak there, sometimes saying something to Karan Thapas. Why is he not transparent? Why is he agreed so long not to be transparent and hold all these dialogues in total secrecy? The Naga people have a right to know. So make this entire dialogue transparent. Number three, bring everybody on the table. Now, I'm not saying reinvent the wheel. I'm not saying go back on everything that has happened so far. What do you do is, what has been so far agreed between the India government and the NSCN, place it before everybody and let amendments come in. Let somebody say, no, no, I don't agree with that. No, no, I agree with that. So, you know, this is how you take the process forward. So consensus, transparency, admission of the fact that this is a political issue. Number four, very important, keep the China factory in mind. Funting has said, and others in the Naga movement who are somewhat more militant than Mr. Muiva now, because Mr. Muiva now is not as militant, I know it for a fact, as he was 20 years ago, because he's an old man and he's having problems. You see, I don't forget, he's the first guerrilla leader of the subcontinent to have taken his boys to China for training at the peak of cultural revolution. I stress this point. These are points which people miss out on. Yeah? Because he went through this entire political process, which many others didn't. Yeah, the process of the Chinese state brainwashing him in a certain way. Cultural revolution, you know what it means, I hope. So the point here is, think of the China factor. That if you are not able to sort this problem out, the Chinese are there to take advantage of it. You finger them in Tibet, they'll finger you here. The fifth point is absolutely important. The Naga issue, Sanjana was right holds the key to the solution, a future comprehensive settlement of Northeast. If you can't tackle the oldest problem in the region, you're not going to be able to tackle some of the other problems that exist. And there is, this is the time to actually address the whole issue holistically. That here is the Naga issue. And in the Naga issue, there are two key things. Yeah, do you need a separate state, which is standalone Naga state? Or can you accept that Naga is living in some other state and living peacefully. You know, there is a case for multi-ethnic states in Northeast that one needs to address. Because this state, this region, apart from the two princely states of Manipur and Tripura, was part of the greater Assam thing which fell apart and therefore there is a bit of confusion whether the successor states of Assam or the states that were carved out of Assam to be more precise should be single ethnic states. It's never possible in Northeast to do that. Even Meghalaya. Yeah, you have Kasis, you have Jank, yeah, so somebody will say, I want a Garo land. How do you put an end to this? You accept the basic principle that states in Northeast need to be multi-ethnic. There needs to be a level of tolerance for the other. Okay? So just don't say, I'm majority here so I can thrash the other guy around. You know, that guy is likely to be a majority somewhere else and can turn around and thrash you there. So, you know, don't try this, you know, games. So these are the five key points that need to be absolutely addressed first. 
and the most important is admission of the naga issue as a political issue not a military issue it should not be seen through the eyes of policemen intelligence officers i mean mathur is an intelligence officer very smart he was he played a role in 1980s in the mizoram accord you know he was a officer with the intelligence bureau then he was the ad of aizawa and he has done this bodo accord because he's prepared dot to split these groups and play them against each other which is the shamdam dand of hate of cotillon which some of these mandarins in delhi are very interested in you must remember one last thing that i want to make is when you split up these groups it helps when you are fighting the military because dissipation of military energy yeah these groups are different you hammer this group here that group there and they are in isolation they are not fighting you together when you try to bring together them together for a political resolution these divisions are a problem because then bindran wale will turn around and say so longewal kya sardar hai main usse bada sardar hu so you know i'm going to fight on yeah you have a shillong accord and buiba says no 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 i'm going to fight on here buiba has a solution and somebody else will say ah, i'm going to fight on so you know what this divisions that the indian state is so good at because of this brahminical tradition of state craft does not work when you want a resolution of the conflict it works very well when you are trying to tackle the problem militarily hopefully you get this out of your head that the naga problem is not a political problem yaad raj bhavan kohima needs to understand this before everybody else or he needs to go back and delhi needs to send some proper political person with proper political grounding we need a parthasarthi now we need a rd pradhan now we don't need this tullas you understand tullas police wallas you know who want to understand how oh, this is not a political what is this then you send it to assam rifle just see the consequences just see the consequences don't forget one thing the nsc and i am when it went to the peace talks in 1997 was a guerrilla group of 3000 strong today they are 8000 at the very least and they have got weapons from different parts of the world they have even got american rifles so you are trying to create problems here nagaland is not kashmir kashmir mein tanzim ko aap sambhal liye honge kisi tarah yahan sambhalna bahut mushkil hoga particularly china jab khel kood karega तो दिल्ली में बहुत लोगों का बट सुविधा कैन वी कम टू द स्पेसिफिक ऑफ व्हाट सुविधा या सुविधा कैन वी कम टू द स्पेसिफिक ऑफ व्हाट इज द कंटेंशियस इश्यू राइट नाउ विद द एनएसएन आई एम इन द जीवाई व्हेन द कंटेंशियस इश्यू इज व्हाट संजय हजारे का फ्लैग एट द वेरी बिगिनिंग दैट इफ यू हैव डिनाइड द कश्मीर इज अ फ्लैग इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हाउ वेट अ मिनट लेट यू नो डोंट आस्क क्वेश्चन इन बिटवीन या सो यू हैव done away with the flag and the constitution there now here is a huge contradiction the indian state till recently had promised to settle the naga problem through the principle of special federal relationship now you are saying we can't give them a flag we can't give them anything so what is the special federal relationship going and having a you know chole bature in delhi is that special federal relationship so here a lot of cliches have been floated special federal relationship is i always saw the naga problem as a huge opportunity not a liability because this would provide india the chance to federalize in a genuine way you know bachbai said naga has a unique history everybody in this subcontinent has a unique history i am a bengali some sanjay da is assamese now bano is naga we all have our own history sir and it is this beauty of this country is that we are different flowers which adds to the beauty of this flower garden if every flower is the same a monolith it doesn't make it a good beautiful garden so you know what the idea of india that's where we are coming back to so you talk of special federal relationship that the government of india has all along promised since devagoda started this negotiation and suddenly we have a you have someone here who says kashmir we have ye khatam kar diya nagas ko kaise de denge kaise de denge obviously there is a contradiction there point is are you trying to solve the naga problem with the danda with hindi hindu hindustan kind of a format you're trying to do it you're asking for huge huge trouble and especially because of your panga with china now this can really get complicated because the chinese state 
It's not Pakistan. You have to understand. If the Chinese get into this business of propping up the Naga movement, and they know one thing for sure. Yeah? The Chinese, they accepted a lot of Naga groups who went and trained there in the 1960s and 70s, and have precise details of all of them. All the groups who went. Point is, they did not encourage very much, you know, people like Paresh Barua and others, except giving some dana here and there. Because the Chinese exactly know who are real troublemakers, who can create real trouble for the Indian army. They know Paresh Barua can't do a thing beyond, you know, setting up a bomb here and there for the Indian army. To challenge the Indian army, you need a guerrilla force like the NSCNI, the Naga army. The Naga army is a formidable army. They brought the self-loading rifles to this subcontinent for the first time. Don't forget it. They are the people. So, you remember the battles of Strudul Jutta Peak near Jotsoma Nol in 1967 68 when the China trained Nagas returned. You know how many Indian soldiers died? 600 at the very least. So, point is don't underestimate the Nagas. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. Don't underestimate the Nagas. That's well taken. But what will be the outcome of this negotiation, Shubhida? It's been 23 years there, now. now you a, know, a, Rupa, yeah, what will be the outcome? Me, Rupa, let me tell you one thing. If your train is hmm. not on the right track, it is going to meet with an accident. If your train is going to go here and there, then it will go down from the bottom. And it will be very dangerous. So you foresee a derail, derailment? Or I don't option. foresee a derailment. It can still be pulled back. You know, it all depends on the mechanics in Delhi. The mechanics of Delhi, they have to intervene. There has to be a political intervention. And there has to be an admission. But what are the chances of this mechanicals in Delhi going through any change? Well, that Given the is, kind of stance that it has I taken. I leave it to Sanjay Hazari who stays in Delhi to <laughs> predict to predict what this administration will do. Because somebody who can do not Bandi with minimum idea of Indian economics would not have done this. So I am not going to stick my neck out and predict. Sanjay, you live in Delhi up to you. But point is, these guys are treading a very dangerous path. And they are satrap sitting okay, in that bubble. He's saying this is not a political issue. Why are you negotiating for? Ye ka mudda hai. Okay. This is a mamla for thullas. Okay, okay. Then I, I'll, okay. I'll, leave, I'll leave it that there. And I'll go over to Tamo Pati Fanjubam. Uh, Tamo Pati, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, hello? Okay, okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Now, let me take up where I left with Subir. Uh, okay, okay. Here's my question. Mm -hmm. I'll take up from where I left with Subir. What are the likely outcome of this negotiation that the government of India is taking forward with the NSI? <coughs> we have seen some hard talks. Yeah, thank you. Now, thank you. Anything uh, on I the ground? Yeah, I, I will try and answer that as well. But let me also just pick up from what, other, what the other speakers mm -hmm. have said, and especially what uh, uh, Sanjay has said. I uh, thought some of them are very thought-provoking, especially the idea of change. And also, mm -hmm. uh, there is an interview of Muywa where he's uh, saying, I, I think that was touched by Sanjay as well. He responded the mm -hmm. way he did. Now, I, I, why the Indian state responded the way they did at that, at that juncture. And, and that is important because, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be the same response that we, you have now. I mean, the, the, the idea of change, you know, that it, uh, the, it, it affects everybody, not just the, the individual, but also the community, as well as the uh, sense of identity and also the, also the nation itself. And I uh, would like to quote from, uh, uh, not quote as such, but also take cue from uh, a, a, a similar kind of topic, which was picked up by Fali Nariman in his book, uh, State of the Nation, where he was talking about the Article 3, why the, uh, the uh, first three articles of the Indian Constitution was actually in, inserted there. The first, first one, of course, is there. Uh, India, that is Bharat, will be, uh, will be a union of states. Now that, that's the only suggestion of a federation in the Indi in entire uh, Indian Constitution. And the second, art second article, of course, is uh, saying that uh, you can incorporate more states. Into, in, because that in India is an incomplete in story at the time, so you can incorporate more states. And and Sikkim was actually the last one to be taken in using this article number two. And article three is like a warning to the princely states. I was uh, I'm getting back to the same point again. 
that when India got independence, India was a very insecure nation. It just, there was the partition, that was a event. There was a likelihood that more, there will be more uh, separation from India, that, that, that India may uh, break down even, even more, that more territories may secede. That kind of fear was there, which is why Article 3 was introduced. And Article 3 says that uh, with or without the consent of the states, you can change the name of the states, I mean, you, not just to change the boundaries, or you can split into two, three states, or merge two states, but all that kind of thing that, that the center can do without consent, with or without consent of the state, which is like a warning to the princely states. I mean, many of them were rebellious at the time when, when India was formed. There was Hyderabad, there was Junaga, there was Kashmir, there was Travancore, Manipur, so, so many places which are not willing, either not willing to join India, or else were actually fighting against the idea of joining India. Nothing was happening. So the Article 3 was actually saying that if you don't behave, I can change your name. That you, I can, I can tear you apart. I can abolish you. I can change your name. That kind of message was being sent, and that's a, that's a very pretty harsh kind of a message. Nariman was actually arguing that this was compelled by the situation at that, at that juncture, and is no longer needed. So we should pr probably uh, either leave it out. Edit, edit it out of the constitution, and if that's not possible anymore because the fundamental structure of the constitution cannot change, then actually it's ar archive it. You archive it so that uh, you do everything in consultation. You don't have to be saying it, to be dictating terms of the state. You do everything. You do everything in consult consultation, which I think some 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 bit of it has been uh, already absorbed in Indian Union. Escaped, of course, in the case of the Kashmir Kashmir thing. Uh, again, uh, the Kashmir. Uh, again, relapse into that kind of insecurity that was there 70 years ago. So what I'm basically saying is that, uh, that uh, the response of, of the nation, in the nation at the time, uh, should be understood in that context. That the, when Muiwa was saying that Nehru screamed at the Nagas that uh, the, they will not separate at all. India will do everything not to allow them. And, and if we see it from the present context and interpret it as if this was uh, what the Indian nation is about, even now, then I think we will be going wrong. We have to understand it, understand it in that context, that insecurity that India was in in, in, in that in that moment, and and somebody asking for secession, that was not secession or independence, or whatever we or whatever we call it. I'm not uh, really concerned about the semantics of it, but just the idea of uh, what India considers to be a part of, of itself, separating from itself for, from the nation, was not acceptable to the Union at the time because the Union was also very fearful of disintegrating right, to, that, to that extent. And also, uh, it was one of those uh, the, the periods when consolidation rather than separation was, was the <coughs> mood. If uh, Nehru had agreed or something, I, I'm quite sure there would have been uproars everywhere, just as it happened uh, when, uh, uh, in the Tibet question. And Nehru was actually compelled to agree to some of the terms that uh, China forwarded because, no, no, not agree to, I mean, opposed. China was actually saying, you know, China uh, settled the boundary issue with uh, Burma. I mean, the Chawan Lai actually went to Rangoon first. I think this was 1960 or something, or, or earlier. I'm not, I'm not very certain of the, of the date. But actually, after the China war, what was problem on the basis of Macron line was settled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he, he went to uh, Chawan Lai. They came into, is there very much in Berlin Linders, I mean, this is uh, Neville Maxwell's book. They went in three planes to Rangoon. There, they talked with the leadership there, UNO and others. They settled the boundary issue so with the extension of the McMahon line in, in uh, Burma. Then they came to India. And India, Nehru said, no, McMahon line is a settled matter. We will not, we will not uh, do more talking. I mean, they did, just refused. And also, the parliament was actually uh, forcing Nehru's hand. Not just the parliament, but also the press. A betrayer. The, I mean, oh, they were almost calling him a betrayer. So he was actually being forced into refusing to negotiate with Chow and Lai. Then Chow and Lai went to Kathmandu, where they settled, so settled the boundary again. And the settlement was quite peculiar in the sense that they actually agreed to divide the Mount Everest. Whatever is north will belong to Tibet or China, and whatever is south will belong to uh, Nepal. That kind of a settlement was, was there. And uh, according to Maxwell, this was a, a message to India that even the most difficult issues can be settled through negotiation. And we did that with Kathmandu, we did that with Burma, but we're not able to do that with India. That kind of message was trying to send. But Nehru was actually compelled by the circumstance, by also the mood of the nation at the, at the time. Even in his own party, you know, they're like people like uh, uh, Morazi Desai and other younger, younger leadership, they were actually 
paying for his body in some ways or the other. And also uh, the Praja uh, Socialist Party, Jay Prakash Narayan, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Acharya Kripalani, they were the ones who were actually, I mean, they, for their own, I mean, we, I'm not trying to make judgment of what, of, of what uh, they saw at the time, but that was a mood. And in, in that mood, Nehru reacted. So I, I would uh, try to understand it from that perspective, that we cannot actually a historical event uh, from present day perspective only. We have to understand it in that context, and then, then, then only we'll be able to get the right picture, which, which I think uh, often we miss. And I think um, uh, also the, the change that I was talking about has to be, no, I'm, I'm uh, maybe digressing a bit, but I'm just trying to uh, get at the idea of uh, how we may be able to resolve this problem, the larger problem, where how every, if, if we acknowledge that change is inevitable, is that we also have to change. The, all the stakeholders will have to change to accommodate with the pressures of the time or, or the demands of the time so that we can actually bring about a solution. So I think uh, this whole idea of uh, uh, the nationhood, even that, no, Renan and others have said that nation is actually uh, is not something which is natural. It's, it's, it was there, God-given kind of thing. That it's something which, which was constructed by a certain consciousness, and that consciousness can change from time to time. Which is why he said that uh, you know a nation is a daily play beside that you may believe in something at one point, but you may that what you believe may uh, later on. Years later, or decades later, it may not be the same thing. You may uh, the, the core may be there, but it's not the same thing that you believe in anymore. These things have to be acknowledged. And here again, I had recently also written an article in the Telegraph where I was talking about this idea of change. And uh, sometimes you, know, you just hang on to what you once believed, and and project that as your only sole stand. That can appear heroic at. at and also resolute quality people may think, think of it that way. But often what happens is that that can also lead you, lead, lead you to tragedy. And, and this was best portrayed by Shakespeare in, in King Lear. That, you know, and, and, and at one point, when he ended up betrayed everywhere, there was a com commentary from one, one, of the, uh, 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 one of the noblemen that... Uh, you know, ripeness is all. You have to change when you're ripe, when, when you are still green and young, you do something, but when you're ripe, and when the time is ripe, you have to be ready for those changes. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then you're headed for tragedy. And so uh, what uh, Rupachandra asked about the possible resolution to the problem, if the, these kind of accommodation is not there from uh, the negotiating parties, including the NSNIM, this is where it may end up, that... Uh, it may end up, uh, the entire movement may end up completely broken. Because, you know, as it is, uh, I, I think the center probably realized, the negotiator from, from the center probably realized, R&V especially, after being with the, uh, tackling the issue for such a long time, that the NSNIM is not the sole voice of the Nagas. That there are so many others, which is what probably he realized. And you know, for a long time, after the, after the framework agreement, this was a negotiation between two parties, you know, they, and also is there in the, in the document itself that this will be a negotiation between two entities and at the prime minister's level. The prime minister's level, of course, uh, was abandoned after that signing of the agreement. I think after that, it was only Ravi who was doing it and then nobody else. And Taho, Taho, uh, coming closer home. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I Taho, can hear coming, you. coming closer home, do we have that capacity to change? You, you're calling for a change in mindsets. NSN, I am need to change its agenda. Back home here in Manipur also, when various uh, methods of uh, resolutions are put forward, there's always this resistance. So uh, do we have that capacity, the people in Manipur? Not, uh, uh, do we have the capacity? The no, I'm not making judgments at the moment. I'm just analyzing the problem, where the problem is mm -hmm. rising from and can land if we mm -hmm. are not re accept reality. And there are certain realities. It, it, it applies to everybody. Anybody who is not uh, willing to accept reality, they are headed for trouble. And that, uh, that's what basically I'm ge getting at. And uh, okay. uh, that's where I was uh, when you... But given the kind of rhetoric that we see in the 
media uh, on every side taking hard stands the government of india taking its own stand the nsm i am not taking a strong stand manipur the basic manipuris they haven't changed their uh, views as yet so given all these circumstances how positive are you are hopeful are you of any so that's, what, that's what i'm trying to get at the how hopeful can we be and how it's understood that you know we don't get in, in for a trouble that is very clear but is there any likelihood of no, no, any changes taking place that. so uh, that's what i'm trying to get at that i'm trying to find out the, the, the profile the problem first so that we will have uh, uh -huh. we will be able to perhaps see ways of approaching the problem because you have to first diagnose it which is what i'm trying to do that <coughs> we we have a problem here in transigens on 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 uh, for, on the part of different parties so uh, let me cut it short and then come to the come, come to that or come to what you are asking that we what we need at the moment is a solution is a resolution to this problem and that must come first and what we are witnessing and i'm just i have just given some of the factors which is a problem as for instance uh, for a long time the center thought in this and i was was the sole voice of the nagas and now it's not just a question of splitting the other party and then uh, splitting the nagas it is a reality there now those who have been to nagaland and of course we have people from nagaland here bano and others who will also tell us that there are so it's not just one monolithic voice that we stand behind one party that kind of thing and also there are different interests interest groups people who are close to india people who are not very close to india and people who think uh, of the naga problem differently which is why you have the nnpg coming up for the nnpg history is again <laughs> interesting in the sense that uh, most of them are factions from the kaplang kaplang group nation kaplang group and also uh, every time a split took place in in the nsn k faction one of the factions you find that is between the burmese nagas and the indian nagas and the indian nagas who come <coughs> from the uh, group come and join this nnpg the last one was shango kone who was split with on Ong Yang, uh, so I have a I have a sense that uh, uh, Indian intelligence has a hand in this. You split because you can't talk with Burmese Nagas on the technical ground. That that you you talk with the Burmese Nagas and you're in trouble because uh, you have to. There are so many other formalities, and uh, also it's an international problem. So you have to separate the Indian Nagas from the uh, Burmese Nagas. This is what the pattern that we have seen so far. When uh, say, well, right from Kole, Konya to Surao to Kitovi to everybody, uh, you slowly see all the uh, Indian Nagas in the uh, Kaplan group separating and coming to the side and joining talks. So I think there's a game plan as well that you want to bring them because you know you, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, they also represent voices of the Nagas on the Indian side. So they wanted their voice as well, and that also. is one you we just can't ignore that you solved the problem here today with nsn i am and then you have the other problems that the, from the other other groups that probably was realized and which is why uh, the other groups were brought in and there are so many groups talking to to uh, the, the, the interlocutor at the moment urabi and uh, also the gombora so many other so many other voices are there naga mother decision were uh, because also mentioned them and those voices have to be taken into account if you want a comprehensive kind of a solution this is what probably was realized so i think no what what the solution is going to be you, you asked and so i think i was given a for three four points on what uh, like need to be able to be this uh, grounds for resolution and one of them is this three autonomous councils in manipur and i i think that is being proposed south north and central and and I don't know how how much uh, this will be taken, how this will be taken by the civil society in Manipur, especially in the valley. Uh, but uh, ultimately, you know, in, in the valley civil, the, the valley civil society also will have to come to some kind of a, uh, understanding that there has to be a resolution. You just can't leave leave it in the pine that uh, you know you solve it solve it only Naga groups and then nothing and nothing else. That is not going to solve the problem at all. So we uh, in the Manipur side. will also have to be accommodative we have to say that uh, the problem this is our problem as well naga problem in fact i, I would I have been saying this on many occasions that the naga problem is more of a manipur problem at the moment that's, that's right the nagaland problem nagaland is more or less ready to be to, uh, to resolve the the issue they and also there is one more one more thing that i want to tell, like to add that um, sanjoy 
also mentioned this uh, Pan Nagaho, I think, and, uh, and, uh, and I just want to, uh, and why this is face, uh, facing any problem, the, the kind of problem that we are facing. You know, when uh, the, the, there are, uh, we have the two things. One is that when you are uh, demanding an independent country, that's a, that they, you start from scratch and then build it up. But when you are agreeing to be a part, um, uh, when you're agreeing to be part of India, uh, the state of India, then the problem again acquires a different dimension. Nagaland, you know, if it is the state of Nagaland, then Nagaland is happy with strengthening Nagaland. Why should it expand? Because when you expand, there, there are other problems, including the Nagaho thing. There are 16 tribes in uh, recognized, recognized tribes in Nagaland. Two of them are one is one is Sakachari, so you Naga tribes only 40. You join with Manipur, and then Manipur, I think, is 17 or 18 Naga tribes, small, small ones. So if, if you join together, then Manipur will become the major. That again is a technical problem, and I think people in Nagaland will be so happy about that. And if you bring in Naga tribes from Assam and Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland will uh, not be at the center anymore at the center of the, the, the power structure. And I think this is also what is uh, uh, one of the uh, technical problems before uh, coming to any kind of solution. So I think these uh, have to be thought through and how uh, we tackle them. And uh, one of the, let me just end with this because uh, uh, of the separate flag and constitution, Bharat Bhushan, you know, he's, of course, uh, uh, we know he's uh, close to the NSNIM. That he's been interviewing me for a long time when we were from the time we were in college. And uh, he came out with an article, I think in the Mint, I think, where he was actually saying the Constitution can be accommodated. No, the Article 371A, which talks about Nagaland, the autonomy given to Nagaland, you can actually uh, <coughs> enhance that and, and let the Nagas call it Yezabo. It's, uh, from the Indian point of view, it's Article 371A. From the Naga point of view is um, the, the Yezabo, the Naga constitution, that kind of suggestion he was giving. And I'm just bringing it up, I'm not saying that this is a good idea or a bad idea. I'm just saying that this is an out of the box kind of, kind of, kind of thinking, that you can maybe, uh, if it is agreeable, have them to agree to do this. And similarly, when you talk about the uh, shared competencies, even the Muiva interview with Karan Thapar is also mentioning it, that there is a civil seven of Indian constitution, which is a shared kind of responsibility between the states and the and the uh, and the and the union. We have the concurrent list, the state list, union list. That can be amended to make sure that these uh, shared competencies are taken care of. So these are the few things, my a few of the observations that I have, and uh, maybe I will join later to to bring in some some more of the points. Rupu, we can hear you. You, you are muted. Rupa, Rupa you are, uh, unmute your mic. Okay. 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 Thank you. Can you hear me now, Damo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, there's a lot of contentious issues going on, but uh, let's see what our uh, discussions make out of what the panelists have said. We have had Sanjoy, Tamo Pradeep, Subir, Vikash uh, having spoken on a whole range of this peace talk that's going on. Uh, can I bring in Bano Haralu now? Uh, Bano, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, uh, I don't know how how much of the discussion has been able to you. Uh, I miss a lot also because of the uh, the nature of uh, panel discussion that we are doing because of the connectivity issues that we are having across the region. Uh, but please make a best of what you have heard and uh, give me your feedback on what these four gentlemen have spoken in last couple of minutes. Please take okay. your time. Okay. Okay. At the outset, thank you for inviting me here on this uh, platform today. Resurgent Manipur. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we all hope for a resurgent Manipur. I, uh, as you can see, again, I think I'm the only woman here in this panel. Uh, okay. But uh, it was very interesting to hear all of the uh, views, um, uh, not holding back any expressions here, really. And uh, hearing uh, um, also of people from people who uh, very closely uh, for myself, let me be very clear. I have, uh, 
Banu, uh, uh, I think we lost you. Okay. Yeah, I, Hello. So I India has lost the Nagas, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but I lost? Okay, okay, I don't know, we can hear you off and on. No, no, okay. I'm... Cut off okay, carry video. on. Cut off the video. Okay, what, are, what okay. I heard from the... Uh, what, what I heard from the voices uh, today was, uh, to me, it seems that there is a great requirement for slow process. We may say that uh, it has been 23 long years, and this, this, uh, it seems to me this very unnatural push to come with a solution by any means, by hook or by crook. And uh, this mm -hmm. is very damaging. And I really feel Absolutely. that since 3, 25 odd years, and we are only talking about 1997, and we are not taking into calculation the, the years from, from since this uh, uh, Naga political or the Naga self-determination uh, uh, rights uh, began. So I agree with Subir when he says that this must be viewed as a political problem. It is uh, and a political issue. It is not a social issue or a cultural issue. And so we need a political solution to this. And in that sense, it was very interesting to hear the past with a, a background to to the to the other side of the story, which is never uh, uh, not quite in the narrative when we talk about the Indo-political talk. Uh, it was interesting to hear the, the, the context where the Indian government at that time coming from, their experiences and how they viewed the rising uh, voices from, from, the, from the tribal uh, Nagas here in the Naga Hills. But having said that, I think the, 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 the space that we really need to look for is Creating, how do we create the space for a truthful dialogue? And I really want to, I want to address this, uh, Subir. Subir, you have, you have talked with all the leaders, with most of the leaders. In fact, all the uh, current leaders also, the uh, the underground leaders. You, you have met all of the factions. Where is the space for a truthful dialogue? Because frankly, right now we are all talking about. Where do we go from here? But the question really what we need to ask is, how did we arrive here? And the truth, where is the truth? There seems to be so many vested interests in, in finishing off and wrapping up the Naga talk with a nice red ribbon. You know, so uh, I want to ask you, Subir, where is the space for creating space for... Putin? First, let Delhi put in public domain the 2015 framework agreement why is it a secret document why is it under the carpet you have signed something with the naga leadership at least a section of the naga leadership you are scared to put it in public domain why be transparent kya sign wine kiya hai thoda hame bhi dikhao yaar pata hai hame yeah, I think that's where I think that's where Banu is calling for a truthful dialogue. Absolutely, I agree. I support. Yeah, I think she's calling for a truthful dialogue. Truthful where is the truth in this dialogue? Double where there is transparency? Double yeah, and, and, and then I, there is this unnatural push, unnatural push for a resolution of a conflict yeah. that's been going for last several decades. Uh, may I? Uh, uh, you to to let Banu, can you come in? Yeah, I want Today, to come I think you have to let yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Complete. So let, we, let's not interrupt each other, please. We have, we, uh, yes, we do demand that, you know, there is a need for, for the framework agreement to be tabled, uh, honestly. But we need to, to even go, uh, you know, we cannot put, it's not fair to be putting everything in the, in the court of the Indian government. Within the Naga insurgent groups themselves, within the leaderships themselves, there are many truths to be sorted out. Today, the NNC is not part of any of these dialogues, nor, nor are, is the NNC a part of the NNPGs. So this vested, vested interest uh, 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 solution, political solution, that has been hurried along, is going to be very detrimental to, to, to everyone uh, around this region. to be one another, to be truthful. 
this another political issue when are they going to be uh, doing that where is that space how can we create that space for them coming to money pradeep mentioned about uh, you know uh, the valley civil society also perhaps accepting if the three of council is going to be a, pro a proposal we discuss uh to my to all my friends here from manipur you have to also admit that the naga hills or the naga dominated areas the districts uh, uh, inhabited by the nagas have been uh, 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 challenged for developmental issues and is there something that resurgent manipur through its platform can address uh, in terms of uh, bringing back jobs creating uh, avenues of employment economic development giving a, 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 a authority uh, for or decision making for people living in these areas to decide on their development and on their education and and the way the way forward uh, these are some of the things i i, I want to share here with uh, with this with, on this particular platform but the other thing of course is uh, what we what we mentioned about is the 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 nature of transparency the degree of transparency which we need to to bring here uh uh but more more for uh vikas uh, for vikas with with your um uh for you having studied this as a as a political uh, movement um where would you place the understanding of the leaders of today do we have uh adequate um motivation do we have uh, do we is our philosophy of life um enough to uh, to to go ahead or are, are, are we just or are we just too ignorant really to act correctly are we unable to take into the entire geopolitical scenarios that keep developing and changing in this uh, subcontinent okay uh banu are you done yes i'm done thank you okay i'll give vikas to respond to that question one small one before i go to uh, professor uh, yes vikas um, i have i have been deeply political is is a political problem can you put up the video so that the audio is clear at all uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't uh, think. Uh, okay. Maybe no, maybe reduce the volume on the audio. Okay. Uh, no, no. Uh, no, it's still not uh, very clear. No. No, okay we'll just go to we'll go just go to javier for a while uh, uh, so that your we'll give you a chance for your signal to stabilize uh, javier online am i audible to all of you yes professor javier yeah am i audible to you or not y yes yes you are audible okay yes, okay okay, okay. okay. You, you have heard four gentlemen speak on all the host of range of issues okay now let's hear your on it let's hear your uh, take on it uh, first of all i deeply appreciate the resurgent manipur organizers for having including even the nagas and others which is a very broad kind of an approach so i will really appreciate for your broad minded approach so i shall begin first with uh, sanjay hajarika's uh, presentation i will agree with him when he said that the negotiation has not moved forward since 1947 and another very important point that sanjay has made is ethnic land marker that is very important in the north east and that those of us who are familiar with the post modern thought i think we have to take the cognizance of the importance of the various diversities their aspirations 
and their expectation and coming together of different ethnic groups or different diverse group is very very important to have a dialogue it's very important and to hear from different perspective so i think that point which uh, sanjay has emphasized i really love that i really appreciate that inclusive approach is very very important and vital and that he has highlighted and the dialogue and the good will has to be there the transparency now coming to vikas point he talk of the strong naga nationalism i can say his uh, understanding is very correct inside the heart of heart the nagas will not admit that they are indian even today including educated people they would not like to admit that they are indian so that strong feeling is still very much there so against that background what would be the reasonable and the rational kind of uh, conclusion of the dialogue so i think that is one important question that we need to think about coming to subir subir has very forcefully argued out with a strong conviction and with a honest uh, opinion and i think that is very important his understanding of uh, ravi the negotiator is also absolutely correct i agree with him he been trained as a policeman he tends to see all the problem from the law and order perspective he cannot see and he cannot transcend beyond that so for such important long running kind of insurgency a broad perspective is very very important in order to have a meaningful conclusion of such a political dialogue so i think there subir has very forcefully and powerfully pointed out even the possible chinese involvement in the future so that cannot be ruled out so in order to have a far sighted vision i think what subir has said i fully agree that multi ethnic state diversity is very very important to take into consideration moreover india is a new nation in to, india today is a new nation and for the liberal indians liberal advocate even for each state of india to have a separate state so a separate flag and a separate constitution in the near future would be a strong and a powerful india that is my view and a lot of indian liberals also have this view but the way the present indian uh, government and the state is moving is towards a monolithic kind of a trend the jetory which is detrimental to india in the long run and i think subir has beautifully given a wonderful metaphor of let different flowers flourish and grow that should be respected and i think that would be even advocated by even great saints and seers and great visionaries so going by that spirit i think it is not only for the nagas but even for all the state in india in order to have that diversity that should be respected so but the present trend i do not think they are in a mood to have this kind of a political vision now coming to a bit when pradeep was telling about the uh seven nnpg and the nagas within the present nagaland state are happy or they are ready actually that is wrong as bano has uh, rightly pointed out even the original 
Naga National Council, that is NNC. They are not at all there. They are not involved. And they are still very much there. A lot of people, public, are even with them also. Therefore, to have the settlement with the so-called seven NEPG, the number is actually very small. Though it is seven, but actual number is actually very small. Therefore, there I think uh, Pradeep reading is, I think, not accurate. But I think what Pradeep has uh, made one important point about the Manipur civil society and the Article 3 of the Indian Constitution, I think that is important. For the integration of the, say, Naga areas within Manipur or within Arunachal Pradesh, maybe absolute majority area, 90 to 80 percent, I think Pradeep is right. Consultation and the consensus should be there with the Manipur Civil Society. And they should have serious, uh, rational, and reasonable kind of a dialogue and meaningful dialogue. Discussion should be there without their consent and without having a discussion with them. It may not be, of course, proper. And it may not be within the spirit of the Article 3 and 4 of the Indian Constitution, though the two articles provide for rearrangement, redrawing of the boundaries. So that I think Pradeep has made important point. So I think in order to have a meaningful kind of a conclusion, uh, not only the Manipur civil societies and the intellectuals, but also people like Prashant Bhushan and many others, I think we need to get them involved so that enlightened, liberal, democratic thought will be discussed. Otherwise, as I see today, India, the present trend is moving towards a monolithic, uh, orthodox religious kind of uh, views which is not at all good for even India in the long run. Not only not good for India, but it is not good for the world even. So I think these are some of my broad comments and I think uh, Subir wants to say something. I think I saw him raising his hands also. So I will leave it to our moderator, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Yuna. Thank you very much for okay. the time. Professor Jeria, thank you for your uh, beautiful sum up. Uh, we will now go back to our panel members uh, for next four minutes. I'll give each of the panel members one minute each to respond to our commenta commentators' views. Uh, first, I'll come to Sanjoyda first. Sanjoyda, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, you take your one minute to respond to what has been commented on your piece. Well, I don't think there have been uh, anything but good things that have been said. Uh, anything, no, anything but good things that have been said so far. But I will add, I don't want to respond to the comments. I will just add uh -huh. a thought which I think uh, would be useful to, to consider. Which is that how, it's not a question of just, uh, Banu put it very well, how did we get here? The question is, where are we? You know? And how mm -hmm. do you move forward? I mean, that's the question. How do we move forward? We know where people want to go. Different people have different views of where they want to go. So I think it'll be good if we are able to develop through this process of today and the, the Manipur uh, Resurgent Group and uh, other colleagues here to, to have a conversation, continue a conversation among all of us on all the points we've discussed to see if we can get to the larger conversation which is outside of the government which is track two or track three or whatever but which without which no solution no settlement no agreement can last bring in the people okay bring in the people make the uh, make the debate more larger okay let me come to the tamo pradeep are you there online more tamo pradeep? inclusive the word is inclusive more inclusive, more inclusive yes yeah i am here I'm okay, here. I have. Uh, uh, you can respond to Javier also. Uh, one minute, Tamo Pradeep. 
Yeah, okay. I was, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I was not really saying that the Article 3 uh, should be applied now. I was only uh, pointing out the problem and why it came into existence, the Article 3, why India thought this was necessary. Because it, it, and in the beginning, India thought itself as an incomplete story, which is why Article 2 and 3 are there. Which is, I mean, it's not, not my argument, it's uh, Farin Ariman's argument. And that was there. And also, uh, I, I'm uh, not saying who is in the majority, NNPG or NSNIM. I'm saying only that uh, these voices are necessary. That you, or, or I'm not saying all, all NNC factions are there in the NNPG. Uh, and all, uh, probably, you know, as you see it, maybe Nagaland is backing out from the insurgency thing, and, which is why the majority of those who are still active there are from Manipur and uh, the NSNIM especially. And uh, the groups in Nagaland are actually joining the other one. Why did, for instance, Django Konyak, Willy Broco, he joined that and not in NSNIM. NSNIM has been inviting them for all this while. That didn't happen. But that's, that's another matter altogether. I'm, I'm saying that all wishes have to be taken care of. Once upon a time, probably it was thought that the NSNIM was the sole voice of the Nagas, which was soon was discovered was not. Which is why they are trying to bring in uh, the other groups as well. Whatever it is, I think it has to be a comprehensive kind of a solution. And also, uh, I just want to bring in the other idea of uh, identity. You know, identity, as so many of us, so many have, so much has been written about it, is more of a negotiation. I'm not talking about the instrumental kind of thing that you have multiple identity, which Amartya Sen talks about. But it's also uh, an imagined community. It's an it's an imagined community. It's nothing. There's nothing intrinsic about identity. If we do a genome study, probably. People who call themselves Tees, for instance, I, I think probably we have very, very different origins. But uh, that imagination has come about now to say that this is a community. So this is the case. If we acknowledge this, then the idea of the identity can actually change for the better. We can, we can become more accommodative. And that's, what, that's, basically, that's basically what I'm getting at, that maybe uh, people have to step back a little. People who are so strong about their individual identity, but that the identity few. Uh, even this, um, uh, 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 the book, uh, I'm forgetting, uh, Iralu's book on, uh, it's an Iralu's book on, on, on the customs. Naga Saga, it's uh, called Naga Saga, Kaka Iralu's book. Oh, no, no, not Kaka Iralu, the uh, Isteran, Isteran's book. Oh, Isteran, okay. Yeah, this, this is on the Naga customs. Yeah, yeah, or, customary law. Nagaland trades only. Not, even in the Nagaland tribes, you see so much of the difference between one tribe and the other. Even the uh, myths of origin is quite different. What I'm, what I'm saying is that identity, can, I'm not disputing any identity. An identity can come about, but that identity is an imagination. It's nothing intrinsic about it. And if we acknowledge this, maybe we, it's, it's a little more malleable. It becomes more, a little more accommodative. So maybe uh, uh, I'm just imagining another kind of a situation where you know, Nagaland, all everybody in Nagaland and Manipur can think of themselves as one. If that kind of thing happens, then I think the problem reduces. What I'm essentially suggesting is that we need to soften some of the boundaries. I'm not saying we erase boundaries, but we need to soften some of the boundaries because some of these boundaries are actually created by circumstances. As, as uh, you know, I was, I was saying in the beginning, when Heru responded the way that he did, there were, there were some compulsions that made him do it that way. So when we come about and these identities are formed uh, in, in the region, there, there were also sudden compulsions which made them do it that way. And now if we acknowledge that, then maybe we can deconstruct it and say that we can have a larger identity suiting in, 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 in the problem solution effort. If that is the case, then have we, uh, uh, I can be uh, something, I can be something else over and above that as well. That kind of thing has been said by Amartya as well. So maybe we have to be looking for those kind of uh, 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 the redefinition of identity, renegotiation, because you know identity is uh, is very much a negotiation. That they, even amongst the Maitreyas, if you uh, see, if you go back 300 years, maybe maybe it's very very different. Maybe the clans were uh, uh, very very independent. Now it's becoming more. I mean, you have the melting pot kind of theory in where you have. The same markets and, and 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 same kind of interest, then it melts down into one one identity. But uh, it doesn't have to be one identity. What I'm saying is that maybe the boundaries between identities can can actually be 
uh, soften so that uh, you, you don't see the other as too different from you. you know, the, and, and that idea of empathy grows. Okay. Right? What is happening to the okay. other is also affecting you. That kind of a, the attitude statement, I think the solutions can come about. And also, let me just... Okay, thank you, Dhamma. One more point. One more point. Uh, okay. I, I, uh -huh. I had read this recently that uh, when we talk about the colonial past, we also also have to remember that when the uh, British came into the Northeast, it was the East India Company. It was a company, and a company will have a different kind of interest. If a company were to come into Manipur today, say, uh, say Apple wants to invest huge, or Sony wants to invest huge, they would also be looking for areas where they can get their profits, where they will have a market. So that kind of logic is there. So I think it's for the government, uh, what Banu Haralu said, well, why is uh, still lagging behind? And I, I think the government will have to redirect some of this. Because if you just leave it up to the market, the market is going to follow its own logic, and that logic may not be catering to the political needs of that particular entity. I think the government, the duty of the government is actually to actually rationalize and divert uh, so that, you know, it's, it's you tax the rich and pay the poor. That kind of a thing has to be there. Uh, if you are thinking of a rational kind of a government, governmental approach to this problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Damo. Uh, can I come to Subir Da? Subir Da, you have one minute to respond to our commentators. I don't have to respond really to the commentators because none of them raised an issue with my presentation. I will uh, build on a little bit about what Pradeep said. I agree with him that other Naga factions are important. But this whole game that Mr. Ravi is playing, that you have the NNPJ, sometimes he's talking, he's giving the impression that there can be a Naga settlement with the NNPJ leaving Muiva out. As I said, you want to negotiate with Trinamool Congress, you want to leave Mamta Banerjee out, Kavini Yoga. You, you know, you may say it's a Manipur problem, but it's a big problem. This is a guerrilla force with seven to 8,000 people. You can't wish them away. The Indian army cannot wish them away. The Indian security apparatus cannot wish them away, regardless of where, they, where their real recruitment base is. So let's face this problem, that you have to negotiate with everybody, and you don't stop playing these games, that the Pandit Gs up in you know, our uh, heartland you know, play all the time. Stop this nonsense. Yeah, Have an open, transparent dialogue. Put the framework agreement in public domain. Let's see how far things have gone. Number one. Number two, very important thing that, uh, you know, people have alluded to but not raised this whole identity, land, all these <coughs> questions. Ultimately, it, it boils down to whether you are trying to preserve the status quo or whether you are planning for some very radical change. I am a bit conservative on this. You know, I'm a Bengali, but I, I live in Calcutta. So what? I am a Tripura guy, you know. I'm proud of my kings of you. I'm proud of Maharaja B. Vikram. Look at the ethnic management that he did between Bengalis and tribals, which successive governments are completely free. The princes of Tripura and Manipur were much better with ethnic management than these democratic governments because they played different politics. Kiska jada vote hai, kiska jada kam vote hai. And that's why they have this democratic compulsion for mischief. That's how I put it. Democratic compulsion for mischief. Vote bank politics. The princess didn't have this policy. So, you know, Maharaja brought Bengalis from, um, you know, what was East Bengal. But he also created the tribal reserve, which is the precursor of the present autonomous district council in Tripura. So let's get this right. There has to be multi-ethnic state. People have to be tolerant. There have to be Nagas in Manipur. And, you know, this has to be accepted. Multi-ethnic states have to be accepted in Northeast. There can't be, as Pradeep said, you know, genome study will actually upset many, many, you know, concepts that we have of ourselves at the moment. So, and, and last point that I want to make, absolute last point. Please, please get this idea of India that some people are trying to promote at the moment. Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan, this nonsense should be out of the window. If you want to tackle Northeast, Kashmir, it's a different, distant problem for me. 
I'm not an expert on Kashmir. But Northeast, I'm 200% sure. You play these Brahminical games, these Cotillion games, you are going to create a cobweb of problems in which you are yourself going to sink. It's like Daldal. Hindi mein Daldal bolte na? Ye Daldal aap panao ge, to isme aap bhi giro ge. Aur puri taro se faso ge. Aur nikalna na mumkin ho ga. So you know what? This is the final point I make. Don't create more problems by saying, isko bahar rakh do. Iske saath solution ho jayega, usko bahar rakh do. Kisi ko bahar rakh ke kuch nahi honne wala. You have to get everybody on board. Okay, don't divide. Don't play divided yeah. rules. Then don't bring the rules. This is the book okay. I was referring. It's an okay, okay. Kaka, okay. Kaka, Kaka thank you. Wife. Okay. Uh, can we come to Vikas? Yes. Hello. Are you here, Vikas? Can you? Vikas is my problem. Your voice is cracking. Right. Yes, remove your remove your mic, the plug, and plug okay. it back. Okay. Remove the mic, plug it back. Yeah, you are very distorted. Basically, we can hear you saying something. He's left the meeting. So. I have put something on the chat box because I'm just picking up on what Pradeep said and I think that is something that you might consider. I'm not going to talk about it because we are already out of time and people do, do tend to talk much better. Uh, yeah, okay. So I just wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, we have been uh, we have been reading uh, too much into the into the professional background of the current uh, Governor of Afghanistan, land. He is essentially doing, but he has been asked to do it. Irrespective of whether he is a, whether he is a, whether he has a law and order background or some other background. Now, he was yes, never an operations man. Okay, he was never an operation. He was a staff officer. Yes, yes. No, I, no, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. What I'm so saying is that you don't have operational background. You can't handle these things. So he is essentially implementing the New Delhi's you could dictate. Now, if we if we if we accept that he's a, that he's implementing New Delhi's dictat, in that case we have to make two other you know uh, two other uh, assumptions. The first is that New Delhi believes that the ecosystem which supported the NSC and IM within Nagaland has changed. Now and then, secondly, New Delhi also seems to believe that the ecosystem which allowed China to Interfere from that and has also changed. Now, really? now we can have we can we can have we can have doubts about New Delhi's uh, assumptions, but these these seem to be the assumptions of New Delhi. They are trying to reduce the uh, seven decade old political problem into a Manipur Thambu specific problem. They are heading in that direction. They they believe that they can reduce the seven decade of old Kinaga problem into a Manipur uh, specific problem. The 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 last point that I want to make is that is that uh, uh, Imphal Valley has to has to uh, rethink a couple of things. See, Imphal Valley when when some of us you know argued. That the princely states were much better in managing things. We also need to note that the princely state of Manipur had, you know, visited the Maithi language. The Maithi language connected all groups. It was a lingua franca. It continues to be a lingua franca. A major change. The the script has changed from the imposed Bengali script to the old script again. Unfortunately, what has happened is that a lot of tribes which were comfortable in the old script and Maithi language have now the syncretic linguistic space has been fractured. I still recall that a lot of older Dongmai Nagas had the Bible printed in the older script of Maithi. I mean, in the Bengali script. I saw that in among among the Dongmai in. Different places by abruptly changing the script, 
the manipur valley has fractured the synthetic space now the now the oh, oh, onus is again on the manipur valley to find a new way to build the old synthetism the, at the end of the day earlier no matter whether you are tribe or someone you met in new delhi and you spoke in manipuri mathai but now that has shifted now the new generation of the, of the tribes may not be familiar with the new literature in mathai language so so the social space is has been has been altered so i think the nimphal valley is best place to rethink because the government of india is going to reduce the problem to to a manipur specific problem it is the impal valley which has to take a lead and rethink how it can it can recreate that old synthetic space yes, okay thank you that thank you thank you vikas uh sanjay that you have something to add sanjay da uh, no, i, I, I just uh, was responding very quickly i know you're out of time and every good yeah uh, before we call in the But, uh, uh, audience uh, to just say something do you need yeah please please go ahead no no yeah. I'll just put it in the chat box because i think this is something that bg vergis talked about many years ago and i completely disagreed with him at the time which is that the disputed borders disputed territories can become at least parts of them can become areas of growth by having uh, export processing zones by having people from both states or multiple states working there generating employment which is so necessary at this time um, and uh, using local resources to perhaps send you know high quality handicrafts hand looms and stuff or not the usual stuff that you see you know uh, bamboo products and so on you know really high quality stuff and i think that is something which i had literally rejected i told him that i completely disagreed with him because that was not a economics the economic solution to a political problem would not work but i think there is a role here for politics to come into this that this can be driven by politics that there is mm -hmm. something of a win win situation here if not all and it's going beyond the because all the states would not be giving up land they would be using their lands but it will be like almost like a he told it a trust territory i don't think that concept would work but on either side of the border if you don't know right or not you would still have uh, you know uh, uh, um, uh, units which uh, would produce and generate revenue for both sides and in the okay. next for the reason in the world so that's something okay. to look to okay that's thank it. you uh i think we are we have uh, reached uh, uh the end of the discussion but call in hello yeah hello uh, can i come in for a minute i got cut off uh -huh. uh, uh subida can we call in the questions from the thing uh, viewers i just want to make one point here i'm responding to vikas Very okay quick. please please what is that you know if it Mathur. is the same delhi which allows mr mathur to go ahead with bringing all groups for a comprehensive border settlement why will they object to mr ravi bringing in everybody on the table i think there is a role of the local satrap at times misinterpreting things to delhi and which get which is sort of compounded because delhi is bothered with so many other problems like the china border the ladakh problem the kashmir problem and all that is that very often local satraps local subedars as i may put it create this problem so it is very much up to the skills of the interlocutor it has an impact and i have seen this very closely because i worked with mr mathur and i have seen how he accepts different groups and brings them to the table and and drives of the point that it is in everybody's interest to have a comprehensive settlement whereas this other gentleman is playing games between the different groups tu nahi aayega to iske sath settlement kar lunga you know this does not work it's interlocutors okay. to play a role and therefore this must um, be flag rupa i have to leave i'm afraid it's been okay, a, okay fine we will over okay. so if you'll excuse uh, me i okay. either you can wrap up or i i, I uh, we are wrapping up but we we just uh, uh Calling in some questions from the viewers, one or two of them. No, it's nearly four o'clock now. No. 
it's a Sunday, you know, you must forgive yeah. me, but uh, I thought for <laughs> okay, some we'll, we'll, we'll yesterday, we'll so I have to do this now. I can't, we'll I have to work in the house, which is continuing. Okay. So, we'll, I'm sorry. We'll wind up in Thank you. Thank no. you. I have to go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll try and wrap up in next 10 minutes. So if there are any questions for the panel members, uh, we're open to it. I'm actually happy to stay on and face questions. More questions if you have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some questions in the chat, so maybe we can start with that. Yeah, chat. Yeah, can't see the chat. Um, just put it up on the screen for us. Oh, shit. Maybe the one who wrote the chat, maybe they can ask the question directly. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Madhu Chandra from Hyderabad. I was uh, yes. ad ad addressing to the Subir. Yeah, yeah, tell me. I was asking. Yeah, I was asking, supposing, suppose if we don't have BJP in Assam and in Manipur and then the Alliance government in Nagaland, would Modi would have done what he has promised in 2015 by now? By any way? I mean, you said, yeah. you said, you said it's a very much political, so I, I really agree. Uh, though it may not be significant nationally, but especially in the North East, especially in two, three states, is a very, very spe uh, 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 I mean, important ones. So that's why I'm wondering if these two or three states were ruled by Congress, would have would the central have done the way they have done to the I mean, uh, you know, I don't want to get into this hypothetical kind of question, but I will flag one very important point. Look at the Mizo Accord. The Congress knew that they are going out of power. They actually agreed to step down. Lal Thanwala actually agreed to step down and make way for an interim government which was headed by Lal Dinga. Up, you will attack Congress and everything, but please try to understand that the Congress, in the interest of the country, did step down. They also, in a way, knew that if they signed the Assam Accord, you know, these boys would come to power, which happened. Yeah, 1985 election, Congress lost. <coughs> AGP came to power. So faced with certain electoral defeat, or faced with immediate removal from government, which they have come to power by election, Laltan Wala was an elected chief minister. Why did they step down? My point is, the BJP was non-existent in Northeast. Today they have some presence here. Is it so much more important for somebody who talks and beats the chest? The desh ke liye hum ye kar denge, wo kar denge. Ye chota mota do char vote vote ke chakkar mein, aap desh ka bada jo issue hai, bada jo mudda hai, usko bhool kiyo rahe ho bhaiya? उसके बाद में कांग्रेस को कम से कम क्रिटिसाइज मत करो क्योंकि कांग्रेस ने गवर्नमेंट सैक्रिफाइस करके पीस लाया है मिजोरम में ये याद रखो और ये याद रखने के बाद अगर छोटा मोटा जो ये है ना कि इसमें हमको दो वोट ज्यादा मिल जाएंगे ये सब बकवास बंद करो यू सेटल ए नेशनल प्रॉब्लम विद अ नेशनल परस्पेक्टिव सुविधा वी हैव जस्ट 7 मिनट्स मोर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू हैव मोर क्वेश्चंस इन सम फ्यू मोर क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम आवर व्यूअर्स रूपा यू आर बिहेविंग लाइक द बीबीसी स्टूडियो मैनेजर अगर दस मिनट वेरी ब्रिटिश वे हमारे दस मिनट so can we have someone else uh, yeah, uh, can i can i can i can i put a question here to mr subir yes please yes 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 please well uh, <laughs> just just one line question i would like to know uh, from subir da which in fact which part of which party is playing fear game there is either whether the nsn im is playing a fair game or either the government of india is a player playing a fair game 
which of them is sincere in the 23 years long process of peace talks? Both want the settlement to be on their own terms and both are playing unfair game. Muiwa is not doing justice to the Naga cause when he tries to monopolize the entire space. Don't forget, Muiwa's political training is in China in 1966 when he went there at the peak of cultural revolution. He was trained by communist apparatchiks who don't believe, who believe in monopoly. It's a one-party state. This thing has sat on his head that there can be only one sun under one sky. So Naga movement ka leader hum hai, baki sab. No, sorry. That's if, the problem he has created. He is not democratic enough within the Naga political space. Number one, okay. I, I can say this to him on his face, though I know him very well. But okay, I don't back off from criticizing him like some of our other friends. NSCN ka interview mil ne ke liye, hum usko ja ke tel laga ga. Tel laga ne ka isa bhava na diya. Second, the government okay, of India okay. has been very unfair. Okay. Very unfair. Okay, okay. Yeah. if, if, if both are, right if case. both are not sincere enough in their, on their part. That's why you why, don't have the accord. Why, why, why? That's why you don't have the accord. Because why, why, why should it, India. why should it be okay. let continue? Okay. There is a, there, 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 there is a question. Uh, there is a. See, see, uh, my brother. Please try to understand. Both sides, when they want the accord sincerely, like the MNF in 1986 and the government of India at that time, Rajiv Gandhi wanted an accord and the MNF also wanted it and there was an accord. Here, both sides are playing games, tactical games, and therefore, the thing is slipping out here, they're slipping, slipping out here. It's like, you know, somebody who has an uncertain towel to wrap himself up with. Thank you. Let's thank you. Two more questions and try to wind up uh, within five or uh, six, seven minutes because we have a lot of things to be done by Kapil also. Is, um, people have okay, been... fine. Thank you. Uh, so we will take two more questions. Can I just take one question? Okay. Yes. Kabir, do, you see any, any, do you see any complications arising? without the NNC on board? No, no, I would always want the NNC to be on board. You know, Pradeep talked about Khodao Yangtam. Khodao Yangtam is from NNC. Why not have, you know, at least for the symbolic value. Think that today NNC may not be powerful. But don't forget, it's the faction of FISO. It's, it's FISO. So it's, you know, why not have them on board? You know, if you want to have a settlement, Somewhere, uh, you know, in Tripura, I don't mind the king to be part of it. Though the king is dead, but still long live the king. Usko kiyo baar rakhna hai. Symbol hai. Okay, fine. But, but, but in 1997, in 1997, when the ceasefire accord was signed, it was very clear. The civil society voice was to the government of India, to NSC and IM, involve all the groups. And if we rewind history 23 years ago, absolutely, You're right. there was just NSC and IM and NNC and NSC and K. There were just these three groups were there. And it was the voice of the civil society to the government of India to include all the factions. Now government of India is reaping what they have sowed. Okay. That's right. Fine. You said the government okay. of India plays these games from time to time. No, keeping no, this guy out, bringing that guy from, in. Uh, that the work. viewers, what are questions? Anyone have any last questions left? Yes, Bimal? Uh, we can't hear you. Tamo doesn't have a question or what? I, uh, or? I, I would like to ask a question to uh, Vikas. Uh, Vikas. Hello, can you hear me? Because are you on? Yes. I, I, uh, I, I think your assessment is it's, it's brilliant and I know you have brought out some of the uh, processes be beyond the what normally is said. Because it was very good actually. Uh, in the public mm -hmm. domain, you know, the larger things that we see, you, you see that, especially the way if you look back from the 1940s, 50s onwards, the manner in which Congress, as Kothari would call it, the Congress system dominated uh, political cultures to how the RSS and Hindu rights have been working on the ground with exported members, or rather imported activists there. I know about what it happened in the school systems and you know in Arunachal, even in Manipur we have, I don't want to take the name of the school, it's a very prominent school which has 
uh, run through in since 50 is on words. Can we answer to my talk? What I would like to know is. You seem to have suggested that. Uh, I know you have moved the Burmese, Agha, 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 and then you're trying to corner it. When you use the word like you think that they can quarantine in Urkrul is what you're saying it. But you see the entire process of negotiation in 23 years is also a part of uh, counter insurgency strategies. The manner in which how the Sajik Tampag was thought to be cleansed uh, exactly. by holding on to something else. Absolutely. You know? This strategic movement and uh, you know, the war by other means. Any animosity between the valley and you know and as we play it out. Uh, but having said all these things now, you seem to suggest that a partial sort of a solution is it possible at this moment? One question is this one. And to what implication do you see if NSN I were actually to be Final agreement or whatever the final yeah, agreement. So I'm saying is that is it possible for a sort of a transitory par partial or you know sort of a conclusion at the moment? And uh, what implication will have if NSN IM is out of it? Oh. See, if you leave NSN IM out of it, the Indian state would have missed the most important opportunity to enlarge its understanding of constitutional. Federalism. This is an opportunity where it can absolutely fight the flood. However, the problem, as I see, is that the people of Nagaland uh, have been annoyed by the NSCN IM. NSCN, you know, even before RN we came here, the NSCN IM had already, you know, annoyed the people of Nagaland. We remember 2007, you know, Dimapur, there was a fighting between the Themas and and the, and the, so in fact in fact Horam says that even in their heyday days NSC and IM had problems here. So the, the point is that people of the state for uh, I mean in, in in 2016 or 15 I first heard from some very you know involved you know senior uh, uh, because in Nagaland that the people need a pause. The people need a temporary pause at this stage, they cannot continue with this state of uncertainty forever. So uh, the government of India has seized upon that. And now the government is essentially asking, you know, if, is effectively asking, if you want to go back to the courts, you should go back. But who is going to fight for you within the territorial boundaries of Nagaland? That's a very important you know, thing. So they believe that but for, but for me, the main problem is that 80 year old people are discussing the future of, of, of the 20 year olds. The people who are going who, are, who have only 10 or 15 years of their lives, they are deciding about the few, next 60 years of people who are 18 or 20 year old. I think you know the whether RN is way of playing you know intelligence games with these groups in Eastern Nagaland, etc., are, are good or bad. But we need to include all sections. You know, we need to include all yeah, sections. Absolutely. Right now, right now, the Tangus are not known in Mumbai when I see I am. They are known for a fashion designer who designs the the leather key jackets of practically all film stars. They are known for that. See, so this is a new generation which is you know, going out and Mr. Muiva is trying to suggest the old 1960s Absolutely. tradition. No, that will not work. See, this new generation, this, this gentleman who's from, who's from the Ukru, who's designing the jackets of everyone, he would have faced, you know, all discriminations and racism, but he's prepared to Fight it out. Now, well, if you say, no, no, you come back to Ukrul and I will give you inner line permit, I will give you local council, I will give you a village gate. No, but he has a much larger key life. He has a much larger key life. He still, you know, he still identified himself as a, as a Thangul from Ukrul. But, but he cannot live with the position that Mr. Muiva is negotiating on his 
behalf. So it will be a very sorry if the government of India indeed, you know, excludes NSC and IIM because it will have again postponed the fundamental question of how federalism is conceived of in the Indian constitution. However, they are they are you know banking on the fact that nobody in N Nagaland might be prepared to pick up a gun for your gun for the N S C N I M. Okay, that's it. Uh, moderator, with your okay. permission, with your permission, yeah. uh, can keep it quick because you are trying to wrap up. Uh, yes. Yeah, just small minor correction of of, of Vikas in Timapur, 2007. The incident was between the Semas and only Tanku, not yes. NSN I am. That's right. They were yes. the only. So yes. just a small factual. Okay, line. fine. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Not right. Awesome. That, that bring, brings us to the end of this uh, beautiful panel discussion. Uh, we must thank uh, People's Campaign for Resurgent Manipur for bringing us all together for this discussion. But uh, as we have reached, uh, we have cross 4 p.m. now, I think it's time for everyone to go back. But before we finish, let me just wrap up uh, a little bit from my own side. But before I wrap up, let me thank Sanju Hazarika who's left us because of, uh, you know, family problem. Pradeep, uh, if he's there, thank you very much. Subhida, thank you very much for your inputs. Vikas, thank you very much. And Vano and Javier, thank you for your inputs also. So here's what I feel after we have talked so much for the last couple of uh, hours. Uh, we started trying to understand the way forward of a talk which has taken us 23 years and no sign of finishing. We see uh, a hardening of stance on both sides and we're trying to still understand what each party is trying to do and trying to uh, lead us. We still don't know where it's going to take us. We want to know a way forward. but. At this point in time, it's very difficult for any one of us to understand or to predict where it's going to take place. But we need to understand that, uh, uh, as most of our panelists, have, uh, one of our panelists has aptly put, the chains in the structure in the center, the kind of governance, government that we had when we began with, and the kind of government we have now, which is dealing with this talk, is 23 years now, and still counting. And and in sight. Now, at this point, what we need to understand is we are dealing with a government which is thinking in terms of one nation, one everything. That includes tax, market, language, religion. That is a, that is a government that we are dealing with. On the other side, we are dealing with a group which is emphasizing on its own identities for an ethnic-based nationhood. So that, that just underlines how difficult the resolution of this conflict is going to be. Now, it's, it will be beyond all of us to tell when it's going to end. But all of us is sure uh, from all that you have said today, it is uh, sure, it is uh, must that uh, people of this region must be included. There must be transparency. There must be uh, softening of the borders. There must be accommodation on each other's, the way the Maitreyis thinks, the Manipuris thinks, the Nagas thinks, the Assamese thinks, the Anuchal thinks. There must be a drastic change in the way we think of our problem. And, and how it's solved by uh, those in power. Those in power, they have different stakes, they have different takes, they have different ideologies. And uh, we need to see whether those ideologies match with the ones that we have here. Uh, at, uh, at the end, like Samo Padive said, if we take our blood samples and if we decode our genomes, we'll find that we belong to the same people. That the need to expand our identity on our ethnic national identity that we hold on to so hard and to nourish. Now we need to expand that to include our blood in neighboring states. So that when the solution finally comes, inclusive one which will, uh, which will, uh, you know, which will not be at detriment of any group. What we fear today is that when the solution comes, will it be at the price of another group? We don't want that to happen, and we hope 
the government of india in its wisdom should take into consideration all that is there in the notice the stakeholders and not just rely like vikas has said on whatever perceived information from the uh, people it needs to talk to people who are involved whose whose lives are at stake directly and then they need to be brought on a board and everything should be transparent the framework between any group whether it be nsnim or nnpc or with the mitei group need to be made public and the public need to understand that and then also we also need to understand that there are insurgencies beyond nsnim and the naga insurgency there are insurgency going on in the past the days these are larger questions that when you try to solve one problem you don't create another problem and when you go down a a a, a lane which has been so long for 23 years you need to show it to other groups fighting the government of india that the government of india is committed in justice committed in transparency because what happens with nsnim or the naga groups is being watched not just by the people of these two three four states but also different actors beyond the boundaries so this all has to be taken into consideration thank you very much for participating in today's talk show i must thank uh, uh, bimol ak bimol for bringing in all this group and of course the people's campaign for research in manipur we hope uh, this talk because we cannot end this with one session continues in future and uh, more stakeholders are called in so that they can voice their concerns so that before the final uh, the final agreement is inked everyone must feel comfortable thank you very much thank you thank um, you moderator and thank you everyone thank you thank, thank you very much to all the speakers and also the moderator for um, sharing your views concerns and also of course for enriching um the initiative of pcrm to promote uh, an informed conversation and dialogue um there was couple of questions in the chat box and our sincere apology to all the participants who uh, put up their questions in the chat box because we were not able to take up those questions our apology for that um now i would like to request kapil arambam to give the vote of thanks and formally conclude the session Yeah, we can hear you. The couple, your voice is not clear. The voice is not coming very clear. No, it is breaking. It's breaking. I think he needs to remove the jack and then replug it again. Yeah, you can try log out and log in again. So hopefully, it may work. Get over.
कपिल कैन यू हियर मी कपिल के हेलो ये कपिल मे बी यू कैन लॉक आउट एंड लॉग इन आई मीन रीजॉइन अगेन देन नाउ ही इज बैक अगेन no actually kapil if you 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 put off your camera put off the vision. camera put off the camera and then take out your headphones and replug it or switch the mute off and put it on again there's a is it is a static uh signal a uh, couple if you are using the uh, resurgence uh, account you can lock out from there and use your person one if the two are working together that the sound can create problems so use your personal account and then you can move out from the uh, groups account I can't hear you anything. Your mic is also switch off. Your mic is unmute. Unmute your mic. Kapil, you're mute. So unmute first. No, this is good. Can you hear? You can hear us, right? I... Can you hear? Please give a th thumbs up if you can hear us. I think that here is probably he can hear so yeah you yeah. yeah. can see her okay maybe okay um remo sir if you if you could just wrap it up wrap it up Now oh, it's yes. Okay. Now yes. it's clear. Finally, I thank you for before doing the vote. Thanks for solving the problem. Restart again. Kapil. Hello. Hey, what's Hello. He's using speaker. Yes, audible now. I'm really sorry for this inconvenience. Okay, go on. You're clear. Please continue speaking. we can see you we can't hear you also the mic can please confirm if you can hear me we can hear we you we can see you we can hear oh. you I'm, I'm apologizing again for the inconvenience. That's all right. Just carry on. Yeah. Uh, so, on behalf of the people's campaign for the people's campaign for resources in Manipur, I would like to extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the panelists and commentators, and especially to our moderator Tamil Rupa for sharing your. uh your opinions i must uh mention a deep sense of appreciation to uh sanjay hazarika for uh for his explanation on how there is a need for a consensus and how there are issues and challenges to uh india's manufacturing conscience i would also like to uh express my deepest gratitude to mr vikas kumar 
for providing an outsider's views of the political realities. Uh, I would also wish to access my gratitude to Mr. Vomik for pointing out very five uh, very prominent uh, topics, uh, points on the issues relating to the, the peace talk in general and the the, the conflict situation in the northeast in general and i would also like to express my gratitude to pradeep uh, punjabam for his ideas of india and how it is important to locate the the, the, the problem of conflict in in, 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 in india's northeast Uh, besides the list, uh, from the from from the PCRM, we would also like to acknowledge our gratitude to uh, Panu Haralu and uh, Professor Javier Mao for for your explanations and your for your points. Uh, and I cannot thank uh, everyone enough uh, for all your participation and and uh for everything we have discussed here so uh, just like how clearly you know the the the, the panelists and other uh, commentators and our moderators have put forward i hope the 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 situation in the notice will be as clear as the explanations and the the points put forward by the by the by our esteemed panelists and moderators and commentators will be in the northeast so we will have to we have to see you next year again and in the meantime we will be doing so much activities we have been uh, organizing events, we have been organizing talks, uh, panel discussions, and so many other things on, on issues relating to, uh, on, on public issues. So we hope to see you, see, uh, see you soon again. Until then, bye-bye. And thank you again, all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kapil. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And all the Thank best you. to research and Manipur organizers. Yeah, thank you. Amen to that. Amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, being part of here uh, from my behalf as well. And uh, there are things to um, reflect and carry it out more activities, specific issues. I hope then we will be able to put up certain things. Uh, this is uh, available on record on YouTube also now. So people can respond. So, but you know, you take over and then wind it up. <laughs> hey, man, is there any after party after this? No, we can't, <laughs> we can't serve the tea here now. <laughs> In fact, it's very difficult to work. All our we teams can have tea party, online tea party, actually. Some, we people, can all have some people are speaking from Ifal, some are speaking uh, from Bangalore. And I just got my tea. So I think Banu is having our coffee now. <laughs> we can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so you can have your own tea party at home? And I think they would be all yeah. okay. <laughs> it's nice. We would have Next discussed, I, and especially there are points in uh, Vikas has also made it. I, I was so happy to hear some of the points. But anyway, let's formally wind it up and we can carry on our discussions elsewhere. But we know you have anything to say. Your mic is mute. Yes, okay. I don't know, Bakapil, did I miss it or um, did, I don't know, maybe you didn't mention Professor Mao or I missed it, I don't know. It's okay. I think I'll, I'll write it, and Shanta will also write some of these. 
I remember mentioning him. I have listed the list of panelists. Thank you, Vinod, Vinod, and Banu. Thank you. Thank you. We made a mistake of putting up somebody else. Yes. Somehow we have corrected that. And uh, the, the fumbling that we have, it was so simple, I couldn't recognize that it was pointed out to me by colleagues in the morning today. And uh, this Bangalore team who was handling our posters, they corrected it in the morning immediately. Uh, but I think there must be some posters which have been copied and we could not correct at once. Anyway, thank you again from my side and uh, have a nice evening. Thank you. Yeah, have a nice day, Mr. Olaf.